Transient chaos. Transient chaos. Transient chaos. Transient. 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 Transient chaos. Yeah, man, the music sounds good. The music sounds good. Joe did a good job with this. Yeah, man, I think it. I think it sounds pretty clean. I like it, man. It does, especially since part of it was accidental. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, the magic man put it together, and now it sounds amazing. <laughs> that baseline, man. The. <laughs> what did you hit that shit with your elbow or yeah, something? Dude, it was. I had my little pinky up like I was, you know, doing fancy drinking on a glass, and I must have tapped it. <laughs> <laughs> you were drinking out that that uh, that wine. You were drinking that wine, right? <laughs> I think it was it was Diet Coke then. Oh no, it was the Power Rage. I remember when we were doing Power Rage. <laughs> We're all, we're all filling up cups with Powerade. Exactly. Chalices. <laughs> yeah. Oh, our, little, our little chalices. Yeah, man. Joe, dude, Joe's awesome, man. He's, Joe! Yeah, Joe! Joe the professor. Yeah. Joe the beat professor. <laughs> Make it, uh, making fat beats, dude. Oh, man. Well, it was all, yeah, it was great for him to bring us up to his lab and uh, yeah. let us mess around and Especially before a work day, man. Props I know, man. You, Joe. Props I know, to you, man. Joe. Thanks, Joe. Appreciate that, man. Um, <laughs> so, Bjorn, why don't you tell us why we're here, man? All right, man. So, uh, everyone, welcome to our first episode of uh, Transient Chaos. Um, this is going to be a podcast uh, dedicated to us coming together as friends, as Shallon brothers, uh, discussing you know key issues in the world. Um, I think we want to make one thing clear, though. We're we're not a political platform. We don't like to get too political here. Um, I think politics does play a part in the stuff that we will be talking about, but we're going to be more focused on the stuff that uh, you know matters to us, um, how we feel about the situation, and we're not going to we're not going to come at it as as a you know I I lean more left or I lean more right, you know Democrat or Republican. We're going to talk about more of the the philosophical questions. No, I think you, I think you bring it up a, a really good point, man. I think there's there's so much media out there right now that just points people at that going to the left or going to the right. But sometimes maybe they miss like the the, the whole point of the situation, the human component of it, or maybe those deeper questions we should be asking, like why are we even having situations like this? And I'm hoping that through this exercise, through this podcast, we kind of answer some of that, at least for ourselves. You know, it's not not something that we're telling people to live their lives by, but hey, maybe you'll maybe you'll like what we say. Absolutely, um, we we want this to be a different kind of platform. You know, uh, we don't want we don't want it to be you know just another media outlet. You know, and I think we're I think we're to the point where we're so sick of the media. You know, even though the media is good, it it, it promotes free speech, but it, it does warp us. It does warp us as individuals and you know how we think and how divided we are especially nowadays it's the truth and maybe if we can have something to maybe bring us a little together because i think some of these higher these higher issues are things we all can kind of that resonate with all of us and so i'm just kind of excited to be here to get together with you guys today and um uh Bjorn, why don't you tell us who's who's in the house tonight man man who's in the house so today um we have brother c uh c <laughs> just that C. is i that is yes. i c is i and uh we have brother tony yo 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 what's up my homie <laughs> why don't you give us a little bit more of that uh jersey, uh, yeah. jersey oh, no, he's yeah. not here read off this paper <laughs> <laughs> yeah because i'm such an after reading yeah yeah so anytime there's a script involved tony channels is like inner new jersey accent <laughs> <laughs> you you just bring it out, right? It just comes out. That's right. Right, right, right. Nice, okay. Nice, man. Nice. Yeah. And uh, and we also got Brother Bjorn here, who uh, oh, who's uh, taking us in on this intro and uh, has done a lot of work to help make this podcast a reality. So uh, thanks for looking forward uh, to for... being here, man. Uh, I'm know. I'm glad to be here. Um, you know what's what's really cool about this is this is literally just three friends coming together. Um, there will be more of us. There'll be more people in and out, right? We're Absolutely. gonna have, you know, we're gonna have, we're gonna try to have special guests come in and out. Um, we definitely want to get as many people in here as possible, um, just sharing their ideas, sharing their thoughts, sharing their creativity. You know, you hit on a good point there, bro. I think like part of this is that I think everybody in this room and a lot of people that we know, we have, you know, creative sides to us as well and creative projects. And I think a big part of this is gonna be 
us maybe exploring some of that creativity, what drives us, what, what, what inspires us, and maybe get a chance to bring some creatives in, some local creatives, um, kind of give us their stories of how they, how they create and kind of how it impacts their lives and has enriched their lives. You got anything to add there, Tony? No, I'm good. I'm the silent partner. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I just bust out with the Jersey accent when it's needed. That's right. right. That's, that's all I need. But, uh, you know, and what you said, too, is uh, the whole creative platform is, it, it's so, it, at least for me, I'm, I want to talk about that really quick. Yeah, because, go for it, bro. Because uh, this, this whole idea of being creative has just struck me recently. Um, I've been doing Shaolin Kung Fu for almost three years now, and uh, I think it was the original thing that got me started um, with with the whole creative process. And it started because I met I met you guys. So when I first started, you know, Kung Fu, uh, Joe and I started like a day apart, like literally like one day. Right. And uh, I didn't I didn't realize what a creative dude he was, you know. And we joke around. We we He's call the him creative our creative consultant. Man. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he opens we call the chakras. Yeah, you know? yeah, man. We we uh we call him the creative consultant for a reason. You know, <laughs> is because he he has a way of opening people's minds to a lot of things. And what's so cool about him? And he's so humble, man. Like he'll he'll get you on on a path, and you don't you don't even know that you're on on the path yet. Like he just gets you started on something. You know, because he's been doing it for so long. He's been making music. And, 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 stuff. and, and, and even on, in addition to that, I mean, he was telling me like, you know, he was in the performing, performing arts for a while. Yeah. He's also done kind of, uh, I know he had put together a pilot for a children's TV show. So he's like an artist in so many different ways. And, um, I think I, you know, I, I had a couple of, of times where, you know, for those of you that don't know, and hopefully we'll know soon, you know, kind of some of the projects we're working on as all his friends together he one time was like, hey, man, what do you think about this? Or what do you think about that? And yeah. to be honest with you, it, like, opened up a huge, like... Dude, like, right? Uh, it just kind of... I guess I just opened myself up to the creative universe, and, and things became a lot easier than trying to force it. And for that, I think he's really good at that. You know? Absolutely, man. He's, he's really good at that. And, uh, you know, and so right after I met Joe... You know, I, I wasn't a very creative person at this point. You know, I, I still think I'm, I'm getting there, you know, because um, I just started, you know, getting on these little projects with you guys, um, with our filming, uh, Tony's pictures, which we're going to have a whole discussion about, <laughs> man. We got we to gotta talk about your pictures, yeah, man. Yeah, he's being really quiet, but this dude is a, a phenomenal photographer. And, and uh, uh, I'm still struggling. <laughs> as yeah, a, he's very don't, modest. As a, humble, don't, as a humble artist would say, Don't believe yes. these guys. <laughs> as a humble artist, and if you guys, probably mostly the people that are listening to us right now at this time have seen his pictures on the Shaolin Kung Fu websites, we're going we're gonna to get into that soon. But um, I... I did want to talk about uh, how, you know, how Kung Fu has helped develop the creative process, though. So after I met you guys, you know, and we started, like, going back and forth between ideas, between filming and pictures and the whole podcast idea. The, dude, it's just, been, it's just been an exciting, like, moment. So the reason for me was I had, what do you call it, a sabbatical? Right, he did, he did, he did. Uh, I had a sabbatical, man. I was unemployment. Yeah, <laughs> oh my gosh, man. It was so hard to go back to work. Um, I Well, yeah, it wasn't that hard because I was running out of money. <laughs> I was like, oh and crap. Reality and creativity combined. I have like three, yeah. Reality and creativity were combining in this. But there was, there was a time when I was on that sabbatical for like the first two weeks. I was like... That's it. I'm done, man. I'm gonna re. I'm gonna fucking retire right now. Like I don't need to go back to work. But then a month went by, and I was like, "Oh crap! I haven't gotten a paycheck in like a month. Like maybe I need to go back to work now." <laughs> and everyone kept out after like the first month. Everyone was like, "Hey, uh, are you are you going back to work?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I think so." <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you, it was it was kind of cool because you got out of the rat race for a little bit, and I think from what you told me, and correct me if I'm wrong, you really had like a like the creative juices started flowing and it's like you were you had that creative kind of mania where you're like i'm doing this project Dude. i'm doing this i'm doing that and it, i think it was really good for you it caught me it caught me like i was on fire man it was crazy because uh two weeks into my unemployment 
<laughs> fun employment. <laughs> um, you know, I, uh, I was really just feeling it. I was like, Oh my God, like I have all this time now. I have eight hours of my day now to do whatever I want to. And that's when it really started coming, man. I splurged on stuff. I think I dropped, I want to say maybe about, I don't know, up to $800,000, honestly, because I was getting all this equipment. I was like, I want to get a camcorder. I want to get a microphone. I want to get a stand for that microphone. I want to get a road bike. I've been down this path. Path. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, With how... the photography stuff, I've been down this path. Oh, my just God, like, oh man. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I, you draw money, right? Like, yeah. it, just, it just happens, right? Because it's expensive equipment, you know? And especially for cameras, I bet, right? Yeah, and then sometimes you just look at something, it's like, it's a small item that you like to have or you need, and it's like, it sets you back. It costs more than the camera itself. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're like, oh my god, I just spent $1,000 on a tripod. <laughs> well, it wasn't that you much. Said, I was going to say, if you spent $1,000 on a tripod, <laughs> <laughs> I got a tripod. That freaking Sony. thing better turn into a drone, <laughs> take off, and help you film from an aerial view. Well, I've and been, then cook you dinner. I've been eyeballing drones, too, so. <laughs> and take you out on a date. Absolutely. Absolutely. And give you cab fare for after it's done with you. <laughs> Because <laughs> it did already have its way with you. It was for it. Yeah, it literally took your wallet by surprise. But, but you know, you, the the whole thing about Shaolin Kung Fu bringing out creativity, I, it did it for me as well. I mean, part of it was exposure to creative people like you guys, but part of it also was just the the, the artistry of Kung Fu. Yes. I mean, it's a martial yes. art, and just like a lot of other martial arts, but I think part of it was actually the performance component of it. Um, you know, because it, it forces you to think and you see how martial arts can be used as a beautiful art form in addition to self-defense and it kind of like just flipped the switch for me, you know, and Absolutely. I think, I think that coupled with being around a lot of people that are ha doing a lot of creative and artistic things, it, I mean, it happened to be unfortunately later in my life that I got this creative bug, but it's bitten me and now I feel like I feel like I'm reinvigorated to just do a lot of amazing stuff yeah know? and that and because you know you still look like you're 25 30 anyway like <laughs> whatever. yeah whatever thank you, brother. man thank you Freaking. bro thank you brother I some appreciate you, it some of you guys here in this room have really good genes you know <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about <laughs> <laughs> I need to learn that cane form oh my god yeah you're talking about um uh, the booty dharma cane <laughs> <laughs> it's the, for those of you that don't, the users that don't know the uh, the Bodhi Dharma cane. It's it's basically a just a regular cane, and it's it's literally a a weapon form. But it's a cane though. Like it looks like. It's like this old wooden cane that's been warped. <laughs> you know? and it looks like you can't even put your all your weight on it without it snapping, but then unfortunately it can kill you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> or yes. kill your opponents. <laughs> yes, it's actually a really cool looking form too. Absolutely. But, um, you know, you bring up performances and I and I always think of our first performance when it was me, Remar, and Joe, when it was uh -huh. us three. Uh -huh. Remar Remar just came. So it was me and Joe in the very beginning. Um, you know, we both met Yanji. Uh, we were like his only adult students. Like he had no other adult students at the time. Wait, no, there was Calvin. Calvin was actually the very first one to join. Okay. And uh, but we only saw him like you know we didn't see him in the beginning, so we didn't know where anybody else was here. So when we saw this guy, we're like, oh cool, like another adult. And Calvin was like a blue belt when we saw him too. Yeah, you're like, oh new guy. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We we're like, oh Calvin, okay, he's new. But he was actually there like. A, I think six months before us. The oldest brother. Yeah, yeah. Calvin's technically the oldest brother. So if he came back and he started order, you know, ordering me around, I'd have to listen to him, man. Because, <laughs> you know, in the Shaolin culture, that's how it goes. Like the very, the very first day you start, there's, you know, no, that's when you, that's when you're born into it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So D don't say it out too loud, though. He'll have us cleaning dishes at his restaurant. <laughs> okay, come on. We're gonna, we're gonna have to block him from this. <laughs> he, hopefully, he won't, he won't hear this in a. Where's he at? Thailand. Thailand? <laughs> or, or Taiwan, depending on what day you're talking to Bjorn. Oh, man. Thailand, Taiwan. I know, it's terrible, man. But, uh, yeah, I think of I think of my very first performance with uh, my my two other brothers, Remar and Joseph, and Yanji. Um, he was he was the uh, master in uh, Chino Hills at the time. 
And it was at the shops. It was at the shops in Chino Hills. No, that's, that's, a, that's actually a pretty high-pressure performance because those, those get pretty big. Dude, so you're, you're talking to somebody that's never performed on stage before. Right. I, I mean, I was in choir in high school, but I was with a lot of people. Like, we're talking like 30 people, you know? You can hide if you yeah, want you to. Can yeah, you can blend in. Yeah, yeah. I'm on stage, and I'm like this tall, lanky-ass white guy, man. So, you know, I'm standing out like a sore thumb up there. And there was only three of us on stage. And thank God, like, Yanji was on stage with us. I think there was a few kids, too. Okay. Um, okay. But it was, like, our very first performance. We've been, I think at this time, we were, like, blue belts. So we were studying maybe, like, six, six months, eight months, or something like that. And, dude, it was crazy, though. And we had, a, we had a, such a great time doing it. And that was when it kind of, like you said, you know, you touched on such a, an important factor of, you know, how the performance is. It, it, and the it, artistic started to kind of roll together. Absolutely, you know, and it, the part the the part that hits me what you just said was how you said you it was the first time you did it, but it was super fun. Like because a situation like that could go one of two ways, right? It could either go like the worst experience of your life, or it could be amazing. Yeah. And I think part of it is I don't know if it's how Shifu Yanji just had us perform, but I didn't have the the jitters that I thought I would. I actually came away from it being like. That was the funnest thing I did. I think the first performance I did with you guys was when we did it at the the Chino Hills Community Center. At like the at the you know at, I forget it was like the Rotary Clubs like or yeah, the, or yeah. the Chamber of Commerce's like a uh, annual picnic. It was outside, right? It was outside, and yeah. we remember we were the last. Yeah, we were like the last. I think the last, oh, last, yeah. last. I mean, you're, I mean, it was dark. I was just, going home. Yeah, I was just, I was just happy they kept the lights. There was like on for four us. people. There was literally four people in the audience. Come on, man. We were standing there up there. Six. Yeah. <laughs> it was all family. Yeah. yeah exactly. and, and then Yanji turns around. And it's like, well, you know, we can perform for our family. <laughs> And it, but it was like probably one of the most like it was like the funnest and the coolest performance. And I just remember just the energy off of everyone that was on stage, like all of our group doing it. And it was like it was awesome, you know. And having my family there to be able to see it and like absolutely, you know? yeah. I think that was the first one Matthew did with you guys too. Oh yeah, yeah. Matthew was there too, right? Yeah. I also, you know, I also remember that performance because it was uh, the the one where we were outside. It was the performance that I got like my ass kicked because that was when Yanji was having us break the wood oh, on our backs. Oh, shirts! Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh my god. So, do you, let me let me tell it because I think from an outside person's perspective, it was it was amazing to see like. <laughs> So this is me. Like I'm probably like I'm probably like I'm, 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 I'm seeing pro- it in my head right now. No, it's I was like hilarious. Yeah, I was like you see me just get like bashed with wood. It's all pa. Yeah. Pah! It, so so to set the stage, it's like I'm like this is this performance. I was like four months in, so I just started Shaolin Kung Fu. I hadn't done any belt tests. I was just learning the basics, and still am learning the basics. But it was even to a degree where it was like they were kind of showing me how to to walk and talk, and I saw them and Shifu Yanji before we left for the performance, had these two huge, like, two-by-twos. They were, like, six feet long. And he was just, like, whittling them down, trying to get them nice and round. I was like, oh, maybe he's going to use that for his staff. You know, maybe it's, like, hardcore he's or like, something. Literally like, crafting dude, a staff, yeah, yeah. like, before the performance. Exactly. I was like, man, this I, is I make Shaolin. my own staff. Yeah, that's how Shaolin does it. I was like, I didn't want to make any judgments. But then I go there, and I see, like... Bjorn and, and Joe, brother Joe, get up there, and then they start, you know, cultivating their chi. And I see Shifu Yanji like looking at his staffs, looking at either of them. I was like, "Oh shit, <laughs> he's gonna break this motherfucker!" Like these <laughs> motherfuckers are about are about to break wood over their bodies. Like, Absolutely. And it was the most amazing thing because you guys both did it. Like, it was just like you guys cultivated the chi, you got into your stance, and he just cracked both you guys, one on the stomach, one on the back, and it was done. Both staffs broke, you guys walked away, and I was like, well, I will. It was technically for Bjorn, it was like multiple strikes before it broke. Oh, Fucking hell. Okay, okay, I will, okay. I will, I will tell you this. technical about it. <laughs> I will tell you this. Joe broke it over his stomach the first time, and this isn't the first time we did this. The oh, first you did time we did actually- Chinatown, right? That was our that was like our successful performance okay. when it happened when we did the well at least for me but when we were at, outside like that mm-hmm. Yanji hit me three times in the back and it didn't actually break all the way it, uh. there was part of it kind of just hanging on like by a thread and I was looking at it, I was like oh man it didn't even 
fucking break. Like, and then the next day, dude, my back was so sore. But oh, I'll tell you, I'll tell you this though about the cultivation of chi, man, and focus, and how important it is in kung fu. I was so focused at the LA performance that we had, mm-hmm. and it broke easily. This nice. one, I was like a little distracted. Yeah, I was a little distracted. I wasn't completely locked out. You know, when when I brought my arms together, mm-hmm. I, there was still like a gap because your back should be. Oh, kind of like curved. Out. Yeah, it should be curved. And it wasn't, like, there was still a little bit of space that just wasn't getting in. So he was like, yeah, <laughs> like two times, man, two or three times. And the next day I had like two welts in my back. I was like, He's oh. like, yeah, remember that time in class you didn't listen to me? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, he's like, don't listen to the master. You get the stick. Twice. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and then, you know, going back to the LA performance, dude, that one was so much fun. Because um, Yanji actually uh, choreographed a fight scene. That was awesome watching you guys do that because it was really like uh, I don't know. It was just it was it, he is such a phenomenal uh, you know like master and you guys were like you guys were just really clean and it was just really cool to see it and it, you know what I mean. It was like a great way to end the performance. Yeah. You know, absolutely. It it was uh it was really exciting because we you know we. I think the exciting part about it was we went over that routine so many times before because we're like, well, we don't want to mess it mess up. it up because right. you know we'll look like idiots, you know, especially like when you're doing fighting fighting mm-hmm. choreograph like that, it'll look really fake. And I remember like when he kicked me too, like he actually kicked me, like it was like right here. Oh, and wow. but you know your when adrenaline he did his push kick, yeah. yeah, when he did his push kick, he like kicked me right in the chest, and it was awesome. Because my adrenaline was going, and, like, I didn't feel it. I felt it afterwards, but, (laughs) you know, there's always, like, little times, you know, in any, like, kung fu performances, like, where you... And he only used, like, 2%. (laughs) He's like, I'm only using 2% of my power right now. And you flew back. (laughs) This is why you're the student, and I'm the master. (laughs) No, but, I I mean, just thinking about the the performances and everything, that's where it kind of opened my eyes, and I started grabbing the camera more. With the belt test and the and the performances, it's like it just opened my eyes. I'm like, hey, that'd be cool if I can get a picture of that. And yeah. that's where it snowballed for me, and that's really helped me uh, develop oh, a little bit more. Dude, you got you know what I, I really like about your photography, man, is I think that you have a really uncanny ability to capture uh, a spontaneous moment. Like I, I just as you know the the pictures. I think when we got our belt award ceremony. Um, and just some of the pictures you took of family, of just, just even me eating like an egg roll. I was like, that's probably the most photogenic I've looked in a while. You know what I mean? So it, it's, a uh, it, it, Tony's master, master yeah, of taking pictures. Absolutely. Of people absolutely. It's, it's my wife great. hates when I take those pictures. She's like, why do you always take pictures of like, you know, when people aren't paying attention to stuff like that? It's like, Hey, I'm trying to catch them natural. Dude, well, you did but, a good job of it, man. Yeah, man, like, that was like, like one thing. That was like one thing I noticed about your photography too was how you got people candid. Like your your candid photography f- photographers and your your style is so is so good because you know how to catch people. It's like I didn't even know I was doing that, and you caught it on camera. <laughs> but you know? he makes it. But he makes it look good. You yeah, know I mean? that's the part, yeah, that's the part yeah, I look yeah. about. Well, it. that's because you guys don't see the other stuff hey. that I have. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you are also very discreet. I like that. It's good. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You you know, you're you're very discreet and you know, you took that picture of my high waters too and you photoshopped. <laughs> oh, that was flooded. great. He showed yeah, he showed yeah. me that in school in, in class the next week and Yeah, like, I have it on my desktop. Dude, it, it was amazing. One day, one day I'll release it. <laughs> <laughs> but I was also in Converse, you know, it just oh god. That's what happens when you roll unprepared. Oh man. Yeah, I had like fifteen minutes notice for that performance. <laughs> and Chief Fuyana's like, Oh, I didn't tell you? Like no, you didn't tell me. That's, that seems to be a common theme with like Shifu's and performances. It's like yes, yes, and you know I'm trying to look at it more optimistically now. Of like, oh, they trust us to not mess up now. That's why they're giving us 15 minutes notice. <laughs> <laughs> but before it was like, uh, you guys know what you're doing. Let's go over this a few times. You know, oh man. So, um, but yeah, and I remember when uh, you were taking pictures. I was like. I was like, dude, Tony, like, the Shifus are going to eat this stuff up, man. Like, before you started releasing photos, I think it was. I don't I don't remember the, the time it was, but I was like, I just knew. I knew. I told you, too. I was like, dude, 
you're gonna start taking pictures and they're gonna eat this stuff up man these are so good yeah well uh thanks but you know it's like recently i have a lot of shifus making friends with me on facebook <laughs> <laughs> and then word travels fast yeah and that's great man because you're getting exposure and you know and it's like you're and you're just doing it for fun you're yeah, not getting paid for any of this it's, man it's all for fun absolutely and every performance we do anything we do for the school you know we're 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 doing it for fun, you know, Absolutely. and we get enjoyment out of it, you know. Remember the black screen shots that Tony did for us when he brought his black screen out to school after class, and Rob and I and you, we all kind of took pictures with it. Yes, like it was like the the quality of it was great, man. Dude, like, that's my Instagram picture still. That is still my Instagram picture. It's nice. gonna be like that for a while. I think a long time. Yeah, until until you get something to replace it. right? <laughs> <laughs> that means I gotta but, put more work. Yeah, in. Yeah, exactly. So when can we get that scheduled? <laughs> yeah, can we get another photo shoot scheduled? I'm getting no. a little bored of my picture. You know, it's it's nice though because like sometimes I want to try different things and I don't have people to try it on. I mean, I got the kids, but they 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 get tired of it real quick. Yeah. They want to go play their games or you know watch TV and stuff like that. They're like, just come on, do man, I got Overwatch to play right now. Yeah, pretty much. Absolutely. So, you know, just having, you know, people that I can use. And, of course, you guys are like, hey, pictures of me? Sure, why not? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, man. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I think Kung Fu has been a, a huge creative boost in all of our lives. You know, Absolutely. I, I think it's really sparked something um, very, very creative in all of us you know I, I think it's something that once that switch has been turned on now I mean that's one of the things I love about it is I think that nothing can turn it off you know what I mean like I think yeah. like throughout the rest of my life I'm always going to be pursuing creative projects yeah even though you, you know for whatever they are but I think that without not having done that up until this point I can kind of see how off balance sometimes life can be where you just get involved in work or even family but you know sometimes that creative outlet really kind of helps kind of express some of the things that you may be feeling or things that you're thinking and even if they're hobbies because I'll be honest most of the creative right. stuff I do is just it's a hobby but right. I feel like it's something that that elevates me a little bit and just gets right. me out of kind of just the day in day out stuff absolutely and I think I, I I told you I'm not sure if I told you Tony but when I was when I was working and then when I had all this time off like I had like two months of work off I was like oh dude like I can do all this stuff now like I can you know you know I was talking to you know I'm always talking with my brother about what we're gonna do with our gaming channel mm -hmm. and how we're gonna you know do that uh, let's those let's play videos nice. um, but uh you know all these projects came to light and you know I only saw the creative light after I was not working. I was getting so wrapped up in my busy schedule from, you know, eight to five. And, uh, you know, I, I think anybody who has a job that's like not so creative, like it's more like, you know, I'm in the help field, right? So I provide a public service, but, um, maybe if I was like an artist, you know, it wouldn't be like that. But on the flip side too, what I want to talk about as well is when does it become work? When do you when do you start, you know, if you're getting paid for something, does it automatically become work? I think it becomes more work when you have deadlines and people are pushing you to be done by a certain time. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like yeah. when you're creative and you're kind of doing your thing and you enjoy it, you just spend time doing it. But when there's pressure and people expect things from you, that's when it becomes work. In my opinion. No, I, th I no, I think it's I think it's the right way to look at it, man, because I think that when it's fun and it's purely done for enjoyment, I mean, you could, you could, that's when it's easy to pull the all nighter. Okay. But, when, it's like, but when, it, when there's the deadline or, you know, it, someone is critiquing it, you know, more than just you yourself, that's when maybe some of the enjoyment comes out. But to be honest with you, I, and, and I think part of it is this, like you alluded it, like, you know, you know, if I had eight hours in the day that I could dedicate to creative stuff, I don't know the, the the stuff that I put out would be as creative because I would be I'd be like I got eight hours to, to mess with this. Right. Whereas, you know, at the end of my day, if I got like forty five minutes before I gotta you know hit the sack to get up and hit the you know the hamster wheel again, yeah. like I'm a lot more like uh, productive in my creative in my creative stuff. You know, absolutely. When you do some other day off or you've already had your day off to kind of like just veg out with your family or by yourself. You know, you 
your, your creativeness comes back because you have motivation to do things. You know, you're like, absolutely, dude, I could be filming right now. And I think that's why I've been playing less video games too, is because I've been, you know, editing a lot of videos, which take a shitload of time. I found out like when I started doing it, I'm like, <laughs> oh my God, man, this is seriously a process. Just like when you shuffle through a thousand, just like when you, Tony, shuffle through a thousand pictures, you know. Just to get two. <laughs> Yeah, usable. you're like, so by the way, I took a thousand pictures, I got like two good ones, you know. <laughs> Which is probably not a bad percentage for a photographer, right? Because, you know, it's playing the odds. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. And you're just, you know, I bet you just have your shutter, like, do, 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 you know. Sometimes, sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, I think it's, you know, and this is, this whole podcast that we're doing is based on a creative idea through creative minds, honestly. Absolutely. That's why it's so important to talk about creativity in this, and we're gonna we're gonna talk about it a lot. We're gonna talk about the whole creative process a lot. <laughs> it's, it's gonna be an ongoing theme, you know, because I think that, like you said, this whole project is, I mean, it's just a creation, right? And where it goes and how it evolves and how we all craft it, working together, that's gonna be the cool part about it, you know? Absolutely, and uh, you know, it's just it's so cool. This thing's finally coming together, and how we're gonna have different people on here. Um, talking day in, day out, you know, it's going to be at my house, it could be at your house, could be at Tony's house, you know, it's, it's going to be cool, man. It's going to be really cool. And we're going to talk about subjects that really matter to us and could matter to, you know, our listeners. Too. No, absolutely. And, and I think, you know, now's a good time to just let remind people, like we were saying, like, you know, we're not trying to come at this with like, this is the right way to do it, or this is the wrong way, or this is our political lean towards it or not, because I'll be honest with you, most of our conversations, we don't ever have that political lean to it. We're just kind of, you know, maybe looking at stuff in a deep review, and that's kind yes. of what we're hoping to do with everything we talk about on this con on this podcast. Absolutely. And, you know, you know, I follow, I follow the news. You know, I think everyone kind of follows the news. There's, there's some sources I like to stay away from. There's some sources that I might gravitate towards. But overall, you know, we're going to be talking about the media a lot and how it's and how it and how it really warps, you know, our our thought our thought pattern. Absolutely, really. absolutely, man. I mean, it's kind of it's kind of funny. Like, it depends on the type of media you consume, the way you think the world is. You know, like you could either think that you know things are crashing down and crazy stuff needs to happen for us to like get back on track, or you may think that everything's like unicorns and rainbows and we're absolutely. where we need to be. And it's kind of funny how, you know, it, one, it's kind of interesting how as like humans we're so still kind of easily pl or so pliable like you know or suggestible yeah. yeah um so that's not what we're going to try to do here we're never going to try to suggest the way people should think but maybe just identifying the way that you know the media has turned certain issues from both sides and saying hey you know what maybe they're missing the whole point absolutely i think that's a great great point you hit man um it's just uh and you know like like we kind of said in the beginning this is this is going to be a platform where you know we want to be a little different we don't want to talk about politics because even as friends like you said we don't we don't talk about politics that much um and you know a lot of us do have different views but and that's okay like it's supposed to be like that because you know we we do live in the usa absolutely and there is freedom of speech you know and that's what's so glorious about this we're able to do this because we have freedom of speech, you know? Absolutely. I mean, that's, that's the thing that I love is the fact that there's been, like, a disruption in media. Like, you, I, Tony, were sitting in a makeshift studio, which has <laughs> a, bed a bed in it. <laughs> <laughs> which Tony is, is on right now. Yeah, yeah, just him alone. No, just no comment. Clarify. No comment. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but the fact that, you know, we don't have, we don't have to pitch this show to someone to say hey you know what we want to get our message out there i mean right. we have the ability through just the the good fortune of being in a time where we don't need to have someone unlock the door for us to put our message out there we came we came up with an idea of how we wanted to kind of put a show and put a, just just our talk out there and absolutely and, and it's there yeah it's I mean, happening yeah, right now no. right this second right now oh. okay right now <laughs> okay just have it right now okay now that's over now it's happening again yeah so um you know we're we're gonna be talking about important topics today um we uh we're, we're gonna try to keep it current you know 
current news. Um, we'll try to, you know, and also I, I do want to point out um, if there's ever a topic that, you know, our viewers or our listeners want to be, you know, to be involved in or to talk about, please uh, reach out to us. You know, uh, we want we want to get people in here just to talk and, you know, just just to get more of a, a diverse situation. You know, um, we want to we want to create opportunities for people to speak. Absolutely, brother. I mean, I think it's one of those things where we're going to always have topics that we think are important, but that that's just like a small spectrum. We There may be stuff totally off our radar that should be on our radar or that should be on the radar for our listeners and our viewers. And I, I, I second that. I think that we're going to always welcome that engagement for people to kind of either message us through our Facebook page or absolutely or, or kind of reach out to us uh, through Instagram or even on our YouTube site and just kind of just let us know maybe what what we should be looking at and talking about. We, we may not be able to get to all of it, but we definitely right. are always going to be open to suggestions. Absolutely. I think it's really important because uh, it's important to, you know, always remain engaged and, you know, talk about important topics you know that people want to hear Absolutely. you know so i think it's i think it's a great start um so uh a few things that we're going to be talking about today is uh i guess first of all uh, first off we'll we'll talk about vegas um so I, i'm sure you know it's been what three three weeks almost a almost, month now almost yeah yeah like probably like yeah, I think it's like two and a half, three weeks, bro. Yeah. It flew by quick. But it's a oh. it's still a topic that is I think near and dear to a lot of us. I mean, I think when we were chatting before the podcast started, like being here in Southern California, I think almost all of us in the room probably have someone that we know or someone that we know who knows that was either there or somehow touched by it. Um Absolutely. and it was it, it was kinda random the way that after it it broke because I like we were talking about, like I woke up, I was having my coffee, I was looking through my usual news feed, and I was like, wait, what happened in Vegas? And went yeah. through the day, and I was just hustling that day, so I didn't really consume too much news about it. But then on the way home, like I stopped and get takeout for the family, and the lady who we got takeout from, um, her daughter's friend died at that concert. Oh, geez, you know, man. And over the course of the next couple of days, I had like – six or seven people that I that I knew who had family members that were either there and were okay or there and weren't or there and injured. And it was, um, it's kind of crazy. You know, it's it, it's once again uh, something that affected us locally. I mean, it wasn't that long ago that there was the shooting in San Bernardino. Yeah. Um, you know, so, you know, it, it's, uh, at least for me, it still is fresh because yeah. I, I have you know I had that personal kind of as I'm sure all of us do have a have some involvement with it absolutely and you know I was just telling telling you guys before you came over here I just found out you know my my sister and her fiance were there too we didn't even know we didn't even know that they were there and they just started talking about it today and it just it was like wow like somebody like in my family was there during this time period and they said they were in front of two people that got dropped. And that's crazy, man. That is just crazy to to just hear that, that that one of your family members. I mean, it was even crazier for them because they were actually there to witness it, you know? And nobody that night was expecting that, you know? And it's like nowadays, like, at least for me, myself, I think about, like, you know, it is in the back of my head. Like, oh, man, I can't. I can't go out maybe like maybe something's gonna happen just yeah, because it's yeah, closer but it's home. one of those things that you can't think that way though because what? i mean you can't really live your life that way where you just constantly live in fear and always worry about if i go out something's gonna happen because i mean you're, ne you're never gonna enjoy life that way absolutely man you know and, and i think i think it's tough man because i think you can go i think you can go kind of think about it like you know where you take the the route of this could happen anywhere right and then all i can do is you know load my own shotgun and keep my back against the door and never go out which yeah. i don't know if it's the right way to do it but i think part of it too is to look at it like you know it's kind of it's kind of strange that you know here's a person that that nobody would have expected to do this 
horrific crime. Not to not to shift away from what the victims have felt, because I think that anybody that was there, I think we can only kind of, from not being there, just gloss over the emotions they must have gone through and yeah. how much that's going to affect the rest of their lives. Yeah. Um, you know, because seeing death is not, especially violent death, mm. I don't think that's something that we're blessed in this country that we don't have to deal with on a daily basis, right? Um, so I don't even know how, how to approach that. But just from the, the whole perspective of, you know, the, the guy that perpetrated it, right? Like, doesn't fit the bill for what people would have expected, right? Like, the yeah. guy passed background checks to obtain yeah. some of these firearms. Yeah, the, the um, dude uh, that sold him the guns, mm -hmm. he was, like, sick to his stomach when he found out that, you know, he was the gun, like, the gun shop that sold the this weapons. guy the weapons, you know? And he felt physically ill because, you know, it was like, I was the dude to do it. But, you know, in his defense, it wasn't his fault, you know? He was just following protocol, you and, know? And he did everything right. And, and He owns a business. He sells weapons. It's not his fault. And, and how many weapons has he sold throughout his career? I mean, it's just, it's just dumb or bad luck that this guy is, you know... Yeah. Yeah, and doing the, what he's doing with them, and the fact that he still feels bad though is is big because this this he's you know he's having a human emotion here of oh my god I sold this guy you know weapons, but again he passed the background checks it it was all legal yeah and and you know a lot of these stores they get demonized for these type of things but the reality is I mean they're they're selling these guns for sporting reasons. And they're not expecting, you know, somebody to go crazy. Right. Apologize, that was me popping the diet. <laughs> <laughs> you mean a brewski? Yeah, I didn't, I didn't mean, I didn't mean to, 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 just... to, to break the moment there. So it was on some deep thought, and I was just yeah, like, I need my, that's I need not my good. one calorie. But you yeah. know, it's, it's, these guys, they, they sell these weapons. That, um, I mean, it's for sporting reasons. People have fun with guns. Um, they go target practice. I'm not going to get into the, the whole debate on the gun stuff, right. but um, they're not expecting to sell this to somebody that's going to kill somebody. Right. Absolutely. No, I, I, I think that I think that's 100% right, man. I mean, kind of like I was saying, I think that that's the, the part that's, I think maybe the most disturbing is that there was, the, 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 that everybody did everything right. Right, and then this guy still, I mean, he wasn't financially strapped for all we know. He, for everything that I've seen so far, the guy did quite well for himself financially. Yeah, he was, he was good financially, he was, he was straight. Yeah, you know? and, 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 that's the, and that's kind of the part that maybe I'd like to talk about is just that, you know, what would drive someone that really has nothing, you know, to, nothing to gain from slaughtering a lot of innocent people I mean, what, what drives someone to do that? And, and there's always a simple answer, like, yeah, there's just some crazy fucks out there. Yeah, um, yeah. But from what I've read so far, and I'm, I haven't, to be honest, consumed everything about it just because I just would get tired of reading yeah. all everything about it. But well, and it then, doesn't seem like he had any overt kind of psychological disease. And then there's also the other part of it, too. It's like now with the more research you do, into, you don't know what information is actually true anymore. Because there's a lot of bad information out there now, because people just make general assumptions or they yeah. no, absolutely they change the timeline on That's, it like three or four that times. Is, you know? Yeah, yeah, the time the whole timeline is completely off. Um, they don't even have the right timeline yet. And also, what you just said is huge because this incident itself, there was a lot of things that came out that were fake, and there was a lot of conspiracy theories coming out. Absolutely. That were hitting the top of the uh, the top of the news feed. That were getting really popular. That were gaining a lot of traction, more so than other incidents. And when that usually happens, it's usually controlled to a certain part, which isn't good in itself. If you know you're controlling what goes to the top and what's not. Correct. But what was interesting about this, though, is there was a whole bunch of stuff. And this is, I think, this has you know been happening on YouTube as well is there's been a lot of stuff that's been hitting the top page that usually wouldn't because it hasn't been confirmed yet and it's like breaking news but not but but it's totally unconfirmed I yeah so, yeah I, we're talking like millions and millions of views and people getting it in their head already like right when it you know before there was even any evidence out and taking it as true yeah but you yeah. know you know what was interesting for this for this particular incident it was the one time where i used 
YouTube, Instagram, and you know stuff I found on you know Google Images and Google Videos. Yeah. As a lot of the primary stuff that I saw, like I didn't even watch any of the cable news networks for it. I mean, part of it is because we cut our cord, so I haven't had cable for a while. But it was amazing to see the real life, real time stuff that some of these people were going when the shooting was happening. And what stood out to me was actually a lot of the calm and a lot of the bravery that I saw. Mm. Like, I can't tell you how many views I saw of people carrying other people out. You know, like, I'm, and I'm not talking like first responders because they did an amazing job as well. But I'm saying like people at concert, I saw multiple oh, yeah. pictures of well, them carrying people you, out. You, you, know? you see the human aspect of things, you know, and th- that really shines through where, you know, it's, it's no longer about political beliefs, religious beliefs. It's just Absolutely. one person caring for another person and doing what they can to help them. And there was a lot of people that were looking out for each other during Absolutely. that event. You know, you hear stories about like how... Um, you know, people were trying to help other people just get out of there, uh, give them guidance, you know, where to go, Absolutely. try to move. Because Driving them well, to hospitals. Yeah. Even, even shielding people they didn't know. Yeah. I mean, I mean, sacrifice your own body for somebody else. For a complete stranger. Yeah. Absolutely. They were just, you know, it was like fight or flight right there. And that was the part that I found, I hate to use the word inspiring, because something like that shouldn't, I don't think it fits, but more like, it gave me so much faith in the strength of of America. I think there's a lot of stuff in the media about how we're not this or we're this or we're that or we're that, but I'll be honest with you, it was like, uh, I'm not gonna lie, it kind of made me tear-eyed to see, you know, yeah. people helping other people in such a selfless fashion. It was, it, and, and tearing in a really, in, in, a, in a way where I was like, Dude, Amer- Americans are strong and brave people. And, like, you Absolutely. know, put in, like, a crazy situation like that, it, you know, it's not like in the movies where everybody freaks out and is running out. Like, there was a lot of calm, and there was a lot of people that were in a very difficult situation, but yeah. they were, like, they were thinking, and they were trying to help themselves, but also trying to help their fellow human being. And that Absolutely. was... Absolutely. It was huge, you know? I, I, I think that that's what people need to be talking about. And that's my personal opinion. I, like... I think we have to really commend everybody that went through one such a difficult thing. But in my opinion, from the the videos that I saw out there, did it with a lot of grace, compassion, and a lot of just courage. Yeah. Absolutely, man. You know, and it, it's just like you said, it's it's cool to see people helping each other out in a time of need like that. And you know, w- one thing about it too is when it gets closer to home. You know, it's you, you can still feel it, right? When there's ever an event or an incident or a terrorist attack that happens away from you. But as closer, you know, as as it gets closer, it it shakes you up a little bit more. At least for me. Um, oh yeah, absolutely. 100%. You yeah. know, 100%. and uh, when, yeah. So when I first, you know, when I first started hearing about it, I'm like, geez, man, like here we go again, and we've had so many incidences which is it's kind of numbing at this point at least for me and which sucks and it sucks to say that because we've you know we live in the information era where we're um we have so much um you know social media now and access to information that we get everything as back in i don't know what what would you say like the 90s or the early 2000s when it was just kind of taking off the ground, right. um, we didn't have access to everything like that. So now that we're seeing everything, it's depressing. It's really depressing. And it's, uh, it's sad to see it, but it's also important. It's also important that we're, we know what's going on in the, in the world too. 100%. You know, it, we shouldn't be blinded to the fact, you know, and I, I'm glad that we live in this time period because we have access to all this information now and we can, you know, watch something, make our opinions about it and know know what's really going on in the world. I think I think it's a I think you know a really good point, bro, because I think it's one of those things where seeing that imagery though it can be disturbing. Yeah. I think it is you know it, it's a version of rea- I mean it, it is reality. It's what it's what certain people went through and I think that part of it is that that's a reality that our countrymen, other human beings went through. Even if it yeah. even if it's you know you're seeing crazy violence from you know across the world the middle east africa wherever i think sometimes it helps us kind of 
gain an understanding of what maybe other people are going through, you yeah. know, because it's a, uh, I think that dose of reality, I think is important for us to not become kind of complacent and yeah. kind of think like, you know, everything is okay because unfortunately there is still violence in our world. You Absolutely. Know? And sometimes, it, like you said, sometimes it lands close to home. And I think if you never have, a, I don't want to say a feeling, but if you never kind of have that expectation or that just being aware that violence yeah. can happen to yeah. you or to people you love and close to them, um, it kind of puts you at a disadvantage, you know? Absolutely. And it, it even, you know, ignites something in people that are so used to, you know, living in a, in some sort of a bubble, you know, I think even in here, I, at least for myself, I'm in a bubble because, you know, we don't see a lot of violence in our city. We don't see a lot of, you know, what happens, but for what we hear about it, it, we don't hear much. Like there's not a lot that goes around here. Right. So when, when you're just kind of living your life and you read about all these attacks, you know, you're like, well, you know, it's out, it's out in the world and I'm safe here because of where I am. But it's also a wake up call that it can happen anywhere, any given time. And what you said is important too, Tony, because you can't, you can't be afraid of just going out just because these attacks are happening. You still have to live your life and, you know, not be afraid. I mean, people die in car accidents all the time, but we drive every day. Absolutely. So, and I'll say this too, um, about emotional reactions as well. I want to talk about this is, uh, I know we were, we were starting to talk about it, um, without talking about the whole gun control issue. I don't want to talk about that. I want to more talk about why do people start, why do people get into this like mood where, um, they're just, they get so pissed off at gun, you know, maybe gun shops in general. And, you know, it's like, well, it, you know, it might be the gun owner's fault for selling the guns or whatever. I think people get this, like, emotional reaction out of an event like this happening when it's closer to home. You know, it kind of triggers them a little bit. And they want, they might want instant, you know, answers right there. It's like, okay, well, what are we going to do about this incident now? And that, I think that kind of pushes people in a way where they're like, well, these are my beliefs about gun control, you know, it's because it's an emotional reaction that's happening at that given time that is, that is, you know, kind of putting people on this path of either, either or, you know, mm -hmm. I don't think people really know how to process it, especially when you go through it, you know, and I don't, I don't know what it was like because I wasn't there. I, I, I I think you're. I think you hit on on kind of the nail on the head on that one. I mean, I think it's because it's an identifiable cause, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe it makes maybe it makes people feel better to say, well, the reason this happened was because guns mm -hmm. or whatever. I mean, but you know, maybe that's because the real issue is the reason this happened was because we have no idea why this happened, and that's yeah. this, that may be the scary part that that it makes it easier to, to pick a hot button issue. Yeah. And I think part of it too is I think that, you know, sometimes people take events like this as a way to push their own agendas one way or another. And I, Absolutely. And that's kind of why I try to stay away from like the, the mainstream media sources when I, when this event occurred, because I just didn't want to be inundated with a bunch of, you know, talking heads giving me their opinion when they weren't there. Um, that's why I was like, I'd rather just get the raw footage and kind of see what, you know, get my, my, not necessarily my information, but my emotional information from that. Right. Emotional um, information. That's big, man. That is big. Because, I don't think anybody talks about emotional information. Because, talk about physical. Yeah. And I, and I, and I think part of it is because I don't know if it sells for the way the current media model is, you know what I mean? Like they play on our emotions, but I don't know if it sells to see the true emotions of what people go through in that. I mean, every once in a while, a, a photo may streak, you know, sneak through that, that touches you where you're like, wow, you know? And, and a part of that, it's like you, you, what you said really, I mean, it's one of those things that bothers me is it sells. News shouldn't sell. News should be informational. Right. And that's the problem we have is it needs to sell. Yeah. 
absolutely it needs views it needs views yeah, right absolutely and, and 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 that's the thing is you know i think there's become too cozy of a relationship between i think part of it is our media and you know the people that are giving them the information because they they feel like they need the access but i think part of it also is that you know they're looking for ways to grow their business yeah. and 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 it sounds bad but i think we have to be honest with I think that's kind of how it is yeah you know the from from day one dude it, it's been divide it has been always divide us because when you talk about hot button topics hot button issues like gun control for example you get people so fired up that they immediately go into this discussion of this is why i believe that we shouldn't have guns or this is why i believe we should have guns whatever it is the media loves it, man. They they absolutely eat it up. And whether it's CNN or Fox or NBC, whatever, their their mission is all the same, man. They want views. They want people engaged. They want people just no, so that they could hike up the advertising, right. you know, costs. You know? Absolutely, man. You know, they're they're out to. They have their own agenda, and they're going to push their own agenda. And I, and I think that's, I think that's the tough part about it is that there's no, there's no credible source, at least in my opinion, that you can go to for objective information because I think just by virtue of the business model that they're all running on, you can't really, I don't know, necessarily trust what they, what they give you because are they giving it to you because they want you to tune in next hour for the next you know, 20 ads they want to hit you up right. with, right. or is this really what it is? And, you know, how much of it is being censored? How much of it is being played up? Yeah. It's, uh, I don't know, it's difficult. And that's, you know, that's kind of why I wish that they would hit it more from a, a, a higher level perspective as to, you know, what is the, you know, really the the consequence of having a person out there that, that flew completely under the radar that passed everything that we're supposed to that we can't necessarily pass a law to prevent that that person getting to that situation again yeah. what does that mean for our society and like really what should we be doing should we be looking at what cr what creates that situation yeah. and not necessarily demonizing something that's either you know however you view a gun as a weapon a tool a machine mm -hmm. a, a something that that has a purpose or doesn't or just a just an object absolutely I mean, yeah absolutely yeah it, and you know i think uh with with the media too it's been it's been uh okay because at least for me i recognize media sources as this now uh are they leaning more to the left or they are they leaning more to the right and we, unfortunately, when you have that, when you when you have the media that's actually leaning on one side, let's say a person only enjoys CNN, they don't like Fox News, or vice versa, they only watch Fox News because of they fit their beliefs more. The media, if the media didn't want us divided, they would cover everything equally, and they would never have just just conservatives or just Democrats or just liberals on each side, right? they would have a very well-rounded kind of opportunity to speak on all platforms. And again, going back on this podcast is why I think it's, it's so important for us to remain that. I want it to remain on, on that ground level. I don't want us to ever go, uh, you know, to one side or the other. And that's not to say that we're being, we're being like this chaotic neutral <laughs> neutral thing right it's just we we've literally let the let the media decide on how we feel and what we what, like what we need to choose about. a side we yeah. have to choose a side you know and and that's the thing it's we've we've demonized you hit a, you hit on something really good i mean we've we've gone away from the ability to actually have two sides uh, on, on an issue where we could see both sides equally and and I think it's it's kind of led to I think them pushing the demonization of people that don't believe what you believe just because I think in in my opinion I don't know why other than maybe it just helps more people you know come and view them because they know mm -hmm. that's they're saying what they believe already um, I think it's 
it's really been a disservice to us because I think that we can't have like honest conversations and not be threatened by, hey, you know what? This person doesn't agree with me on everything, but they're making some valid points and we're having like a rational discussion. It's not a debate. It's just like, this is how I come at this. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. I'm not saying I'm right, but... It's almost this like we important. have to debate. Well, and then, <laughs> as far as and a lot of times, what I've seen is it's not even a debate; it's just an argument. Yeah. I mean, nobody's really bringing up any reasonable explanations on why they feel a certain way. It's just like you're dumb, I'm dumb, or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It, Absolutely. It's, it's just it's just fighting, Especially just in this to fight. Absolutely. No, and I th- and and I, you hit on a, a good thing there, Tony. It's just that that it's the conflict. It's like they're pushing the conflict, and that's you know because they know yes it does it is have some entertainment value. Is there something that I enjoy about watching two people yell at each other on TV? I mean, I'd be lying to say no, right? <laughs> yeah. But am I walking away from that situation any better informed on the issue or having heard some really rational arguments? No, because they're all either talk, talking points or they're all either kind of you know special interest like you know things that they're saying and. I don't know if all these people they bring on what their qualifications are really to like comment on this like right well yeah i mean i've seen it you know a while back you know just watching the news oh we have these two experts on and they can't agree how are they experts (laughs) i mean i guess i'm an expert because if i don't agree with you i'm an expert too exactly right right. we have experts on the subject that are you know having these like full-blown like yelling contests and you know just trying to get their point across and when I think of an expert, I think of somebody that can have a a discussion. You know, I think it's possible to have a debate still without getting too like aggressive. Correct. But mm-hmm. in this, you know, let's just call it a discussion. I think of an expert just just like a master. You know, I think of a master as a calm, collective person that can gather their thoughts, that can actually think about. Okay, you know, show some empathy. You know, what is the other person thinking? How are they feeling? What if I was in that person's shoes? What has that person gone through in their lives Mm -hmm. to come to the conclusion or come to the thoughts that they do, you know? Because we all have different experiences. We've all been through different things. So we can never expect anybody to see, um, you know, our, our views 100%. And we should learn to accept those views as what they are and accept them as a human being that is a complicated person because we're all complicated in our own ways. Mm -hmm. Human beings are, you know, we're so complicated in so many ways that nobody is the same. Nobody is the same. And and it's a good thing that we're not, you know? Right. And and I think that's the, some of the, the strength that we have as a species is that we're not all exactly identical. You know, and yes, does it breed the the potential for conflicting ideas? Yes, but that once again, I think is kind of the fire to elevate ourselves because you know if we all were born knowing exactly what we need to to be the best that we could be, like right. life would be easy. But it's maybe from all of a sudden running to someone that has a totally off the wall idea of the way things are, mm-hmm. and it changes the way you look at it. You know, mm-hmm. I would almost think like it would be great for all these so-called experts to actually have their scorecard for how many times they've been right and wrong for this type of situation Gosh. and kind of uh, and kind of have it put out there. Totally, man. You know... Hey, Tony, been... just open it up in here, man. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> so, just, just to really quick, not to get off subject too much, but just to paint you a picture of what's going on here. We're we're literally in my room and we have this big desk (laughs) that the microphone's hanging off of on this stand and right next to the desk is this big ass queen size bed absolutely looks comfy (laughs) looks comfy there's literally a bed in our studio and that is how we're laying this thing down right now in our defense this is uh you know we're just getting started so we're working with a little bit of a budget here all right and so i'm hoping that as we move on you and i won't have to touch knees for the entire history of our Absolutely, podcast man. but not that you don't have nice knees and bro. i was gonna say i'm not i'm not quite unenjoying it <laughs> yeah your, your knees are very smooth i i'm impressed I just moisturize. yeah what are you what are you using over there 
<laughs> what is that? Cocoa butter. Cocoa. Oh, dude, cocoa butter. You been watching the Shaq commercials? I have been, man. Yeah. Been. You just uh, see Shaq on there, and he's like, oh, <laughs> I, I think I'm going to buy some cocoa butter. <laughs> see, celebrities selling us, selling us media. <laughs> dude, I'll be, I'll be honest with you, brother. The, the best thing that happened to me was cutting the cord. Mm. Like, literally, when I cut my cable, one... It helped in the pocketbook area because cable is so freaking expensive now. Absolutely. And <laughs> we still heard it, Tony. <laughs> I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure the mic still picked it up. I'm pretty sure the mic still picked it up. <laughs> just for everyone, just so they get in on the joke, Tony was being polite and he stepped out of the room to open his dad coat, unlike me. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure it's gonna come up on the feed. <laughs> you know what? I think I'm just gonna open mine Absolutely, next brother. to the microphone, try to make it as loud as possible. No, I'm not gonna do that because people are gonna be like, oh, "Don't give me the diet, man. Oh, don't give me the diet. I can't do the diet. Okay. I need the calories, man. I'm trying to." I'm trying, trying to, to get the gains. Trying to I'm trying to bulk up on Pepsi. You know? <laughs> carb load. <laughs> hey man, did you did you carb up today before uh, today's conversation? There we go. I See? tried. One and done. <laughs> One and done. Oh, so uh, anyway, um, you know, let's let's get. Hey, do you want to do you want to switch? Are you good? No, I'm good. Okay. Yeah, Tony's been on the bed this entire time. We're, we've been at it for about an hour now, and Tony's still sitting on the bed. So, are you, um, Is it comfortable? I'm getting comfortable right now. Okay, dang. All right. <laughs> I'm glad. Hey, Costco, man. No, no, Sam's Club. Sorry. Nice. I got, nice. got this nice. bad boy at Sam's Club. So, kind of wish I got out of Costco. I've heard better things about Costco, but I don't know. Well, that's a different topic. <laughs> next yeah, week. That'll be next week's topic for about an hour. Best the, place to get it. The Sam's discussion or between Sam's Club and Costco. But I bet, yeah, I bet you, you know what, though? With a comfortable bed like that, with a nice TV you have in here, I thought, I bet you it was pretty cool for you to kick back and be able to see that new Star Wars trailer that came out, right? Oh, man. So, dude, that, that Star Wars trailer. It was I off just, the hook, bro. I don't even know what to say about it, man. You. You haven't seen it yet. I haven't seen it yet. You yes, I'm one it. of the few that haven't seen it yet. So we won't Props. try to do too many spoilers for Tony because it's it's something that he's waiting to share with someone special in his life, and we don't want to mess that up. Yeah. But all it, just talking in generalities, it looks amazing, bro. You, you, like, you said it's somewhere special. My wife's gonna get mad at this one. He's <laughs> <laughs> like, I swear, girl. Uh, she's like, I don't even like Star Wars. <laughs> He's like, oh yeah, you got a side chick? You want to download? And you think you're all working out now and you know kung fu that you can just go around rolling out with other women? Okay, Groupies, we'll see. They exist. They exist. Kung fu queens now? But, but yeah, you know, man. I, I think like just when I saw the teaser trailer for it, it was... I, I was, it came off like, oh, this movie's going to be cool. This is what I think it's about. And then when I saw the real trailer, I was like, that teaser trailer didn't really do it justice because no. it looks like it's going to be an emotional action-packed just crazy ridiculous amazing movie yeah it does and there there's so many things that need answers <gasps> there's so many things that need answers because you know even have you seen the poster yes i've seen the poster okay <laughs> we'll talk about the poster then since we've <laughs> no, all no, seen that no, no you, you you can talk about the trailer Actually, I'm, I'm fine with it it's, yeah you know talking about it and watching it is two different things that's true but i just i don't want to spoil yeah, yeah, anything yeah, i don't want to spoil there's no spoilers the trailers i know but there's there's a lot going to that trailer man yeah and, I, I agree and there you know there's just so much but so going back to the poster right when I saw the poster, I mean, even with, like, the teaser posters they were making, I was like, dude, like, why the fuck does Luke look evil in this? Like, what are they... And, you know, the colors they're using, too. Well, he's like, evil. They put him in red on that one, right? He's evil because he, he only got a five-minute roll of the last movie. <laughs> <laughs> and he did dude. that intense stare for about two and a half minutes of it, man. <laughs> dude, did you, did you uh, hear his interview at, like, Comic-Con or something? I forget where it was at. No, no, was he man. pissed as hell or what, man? His his side is so funny, man. Like he's such a cool dude in real life, man. Cockknocker, right? Huh? Cockknocker. Cockknocker. <laughs> is, is that his side? <laughs> Jane Silent Bob. He was in there. Oh, oh yeah, okay. he was. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh my god, I forgot about that. <laughs> Cockknocker. Dude. But the way he the way he describes is like, okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna try to I'm I'm like digging deep back in my memory here because I saw it like a couple months ago. But what I remember is he's he's talking to all of his fans. Like his fans are asking him questions. You know, it's like so. You had like, 
you didn't even have a line. Like, what what did you feel about that? Just like, how rubbing did you, it uh, in? Yeah, yeah. And he's like, <sighs> so, like, he goes back and he's like, I'm, I'm going through the script. I'm like, okay, yeah, this looks really good, you know? He's like going through the script of the whole movie. He's going through it. He's going through it. He's going through it. He doesn't see his name at all, but he's liking it. He's like, all right, all right. He gets to like the end of the script, right? And then his name finally pops up. And it says like Luke Skywalker. Turns around. Looks. The that's end. It. <laughs> <laughs> and he's just like, and that was it. And that was literally it. And what? Did, did he seem did he seem a little salty about it? I, I think he was, and I think he actually said, you know, he was a little salty about it. Right. But, dude, he is gonna have such a humongous role in this one. I I almost like maybe it was like short term pain for him for some long term gain because it was like <laughs> when I finally saw him, I was like, dude, this is pretty amazing like now we're gonna see we're seeing mark hamill back after yeah i mean i remember when i was a kid i saw him in the original ones right 70s man and then it was like seriously (laughs) thanks for rubbing it i didn't mean the ouch (laughs) oh my god that reminds really quick that reminds me of when uh i was talking to my boss right and uh he was like oh yeah like this opened up in 1986 this is my this is my previous boss and i was like oh that was the year i was born and he just like looked at me and he's like, you fucking dude. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, sorry. You gotta, you gotta be careful of the feelings of us older gentlemen in the room. You know? I'm, I'm getting up there, man. Right. I'm not getting any younger. Oh, that's for uh, sure. Wherever you're at, we're still that X amount. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> at, at 10. <laughs> okay, well, I'll give you guys this. I, I hope I can look as young as you when I get there. Well said. Well said. Well said. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll let us lie this time. <laughs> uh, all right. Good. But, but, you know, it was it was one of those things where it, if it turns out how I think it's going to be, like, his role in there and just kind of, I mean, the name of it, The Last Jedi, right? Like, is this him, like, saying F it to the Jedi and, like, yeah. you know what I mean? Or becoming, like, using the dark side? I don't know. But either way, I think it's going to be freaking awesome. And I think... Uh, Ray's character, I think, is going to develop a little bit more. Hopefully, we hear a little bit about who the hell she was waiting for. Dude, on... that part gave me goosebumps, like Dude. straight up. When, go, just, yeah, just, just say it, go. Just just say it. Spit fine. It out. All right, all right. Just spit it out. There was a part in the trailer where she's literally training, like, you know, she's like, she's at the, like the top of the, you know, the rocks or whatever. She's like training. She swings her lightsaber. She's like swinging it, and she stops it like right at the rock, and the ground beneath her like fucking cracks from swinging because the she, goddamn like, lightsaber yeah. yeah yeah it literally cracks dude she she's swinging a lightsaber right it, it stops and then it cracks the ground from below that's like dragon ball z shit man <laughs> it was you know it was awesome bro it's like dude how strong is ray bro how and, strong is ray and and that's the thing like it, well go ahead I mean, go ahead i mean just look just think about when force awakens right she was out doing kylo Dude. And he had training. She was handling. Yeah. She was handling him. Dude, Kylo was a little bitch at the end of that. Man. <laughs> she he fucked her. She fucked him up. Well, so let, let's let's trip on this for a second. Then, like, who is she? Do you think she is somehow related to Skywalkers, the Solos? You know, I, I don't think she. Like, I don't think she has a relation. Dude? I think she's just one of the ones that just has the juice. She's one with the I mean, force. I mean, like, look at when Anakin showed up. When Anakin showed up, he was, you know, maybe he was the chosen one. Remember, yeah. they, were, they were talking about it in the past. Yeah. The one. Yeah. He was the false oh, prophet. Yes. Right, right, right. She's the true uh, one to bring Dude, balance. I didn't even think about that, man. That's a good point. Nice. Tell maybe me. she's the one. But you don't know because this is, this is the whole premise of the trailer, too, is Luke seems afraid. Luke seems afraid of her. And going back to The Last Jedi thing, right? Right. He's going back to the last Jedi. He's like, you know what? I've seen this kind of raw power before. Fuck it. Like, we're not going to do this Jedi anymore. Because the last time I tried this shit, you Someone know. burned down my temple. Yeah. And you think of all the trauma that this guy has endured. You know, he's seen his, he's seen his master get cut down, you know. Absolutely. By his fucking dad. Then he cut down his dad. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. And then he fucked. 
he fucking killed his old dude who was a fucking master fucking Sith Lord. Right. right? Yeah. And he then kissed he... his sister. <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, and so, then a dude he that's didn't what even it yeah, he's totally that's what it and then a dude he initially didn't like ends up getting with his sister. Yeah. Right? And then has a son that fucking destroys his house. <laughs> Yeah, he's the pretty, dude's he's the dude's seen some shit. shit, and he's been on an island for God knows how long by and, himself, and he's celibate. Absolutely, oh, dude. Absolutely, but poor and, guy, man. Is that the Jedi way? Do they need to be celibate, bro? Yes, yeah. yes, they have to. They're not allowed to date. They're not allowed to be married. They're not allowed to do anything. That's and why Anakin went up over, around all that stuff. Yeah, no, he's like, for sure, bro. he's like, oh, by the way. um... I'm still trying to smash, so I'm going to still be a Jedi and use my Force powers to do cool shit and to impress ladies, like Padme. You remember Absolutely. when he, like, you know, remember oh, yeah. when he levitated the apple? He's like, here, girl, let me get that for you. And, like, cuts it into little pieces, like, with the Force. And she's like, panties off. <laughs> she's all, okay. I guess I'm down now. Oh, God, damn. But, damn, dude, it just, the, the whole... The whole idea is just tripped me out because I, I think this is going to be such an emotional one. Like, there's going to be so many emotions in this one. Absolutely. And at With, the end of the trailer too. That's what I was going to say. Like when I saw that, I was like, "This was nothing what I expected it to be." And I wish we could talk about it. Damn you, Tony! Just <laughs> go for it. All right. I'm you know good. what? Hey. Just you know what? He it. said he he's given us permission twice now yeah, okay. or three times. So okay, set the scene. Set okay, the scene. so. <laughs> So towards the end, she, Ray's like talking about what does she say again? She's like, uh, um, you know, I need I need I somebody need some to guidance. know. Yeah, yeah, I need some guidance. And then it like shoots over to Kylo Ren, like extending his hand. Now I don't know if the fucking trailer did that shit. Yeah, yeah, they, probably, they, they, like, they typically do that. Yeah, they kind of get you like, throw you oh, off. oh, Ray's gonna be a bad, a bad but, guy. But what if it was not to Kylo Ren? What if it was to Snoke? What if it's right. to Luke? What if it's not? I mean, that's the thing. I wonder if. She's the other thing that I thought was pretty cool was to see. Um, uh, oh man, I'm totally blanking on the character, the one that was with her throughout the whole uh, Force Awakens. Oh, uh, Finn. Finn, like Finn, to, to yeah. see Finn because he was able to activate a lightsaber. So right. that means that he has some force sensitivity and some force power as well, right? Yeah, but we. But it's a button. Yeah, <laughs> but but is there the thing like you can't there, do it unless there's you know how to lore, use the force? right? There's right. lore out there somewhere that says like you're. Like you know how hard it is to lift an actual lightsaber, lightsaber of like made of plasma, but I think it kind of killed that theory because well that thing was getting handed around all over the place. Right, right. I think <laughs> yeah. There, I don't know where it was at. There was like some old lore about it. I don't know if it was actually in the original idea or not. I mean, somebody can probably correct us about this, but you know, to to be to be able to like wield a lightsaber, it was heavy as hell, and they were tossing them around because that was what you know they're jedi masters they've been training for years to use one right. but i don't think it was i don't know it's just unless they went back you know they kind of backpedaled on that theory or idea because he finn was using it fine you know and, and i'm like Man. there was that one scene where they sh they show him battling captain phantasma or whatever her, uh their name was who oh the uh phasma phasma, phasma yes yeah. that one looks like yeah, dude, I would, I, 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 there's a lot of cool things in there, like little side things that I'm looking forward to seeing some battles on. You Absolutely, know? and you know we don't even know what Finn is capable of yet. Exactly. He's a big piece of the puzzle too, even though he absolutely got destroyed by Kylo Ren, and then Ray was like, "I'll save you, dog." <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah, you know, and she was so badass in that movie, man. She absolutely. really was, and I, I think she's just gonna be a complete badass. In the whole series, and I... Do you, do you think they're going to give a little allusion to what she was waiting for on Jakku, or do you think it's going to wait for the final one for that to kind of open up? Because I'm, I'm still kind of interested to see, one, what her lineage is, kind of where she fits into the lore a little bit, but two, also kind of like, you know, is she... You know, because maybe it'll give some foreshadowing as to whether she's going to be, like, dark side, light side, gray. Yeah, I think uh, I think definitely it's... If if they're building up to it, they're gonna reveal everything in the third one. Um, I think this one is mainly gonna be focused on her training and her evolution, and uh, you know the battle between you know dark and light in her head. 
No, I think kind of uh, like when Luke went into the cave and yeah, he faced the dark side. Right, right, right. And you know, I think too, it's it's going to be you know her kind of deciding whether or not you know whether to go to the dark or light side. But it's uh, it's going to be based on Luke too. What if Luke decides that he doesn't want to train her? Because in the trailer, there's a part where he's like, "I've seen this raw power before," and something about like it's he's kind of negative about it. Like he well, doesn't. Yeah, I, well, I think it's him scared because when he trained Kylo, you know, it went south on him. Mm -hmm. So he's afraid to introduce another person that's going to do that. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, it's that's going to be it's going to be interesting to see how they where they go with it. I'm kind but, of I'm. I'm excited. Go but, ahead. But I gotta say though, I'm a sucker for a movie that has training in it. I don't care what I, I, I like seeing development of where the person starts from and where they become. Dude, character development. Evolution. Man. Yeah. Evolution of the actual character, their personality, their strength, their training ability. Absolutely. That's I'm, that's where the that's where the meat and potatoes is for me too. Absolutely. <laughs> it's gonna be cool to see how much training Mark Hamill did because lightsaber fighting has stepped up quite a bit from the original ones, right? Like with, Oh man. I know yeah. a lot of it was digitized in the you know, in the in episodes one through three, but to be honest with you, I think there's gonna be some amazing like fight choreography. At least that's what I'm predicting. <laughs> well, and you know, like according to the lore, like Luke Skywalker is considered like the top Jedi. Absolutely. Like he's supposed to be like the strongest dude, you know, and there's not a whole lot of Jedi, but even like in terms of like actual like the physical people that strength, came before him. yeah, yeah, before he's considered like one of like the grandmasters at this point. Like he's he's gotten so much good training and he's become so strong that he's just like he's kind of like this godlike figure. That's what at I'm, this point in time. That's what I'm hoping that he stepped it up with his physical training and and it and it translates, you know, because I think that'd be awesome. Like yeah. Seeing it from where he did, and you know, because realistically, last time we saw him swing a lightsaber was, you know, Return of the Jedi. Yeah. Right. And now to see him in the Last Jedi, and from what I've heard, and this could all be hearsay, he has a pretty substantial fighting role in this. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking forward to see how how badass he is. Yeah, man. I mean, the, you know, the dude's still moving and grooving, obviously. So I think they're gonna definitely set him up with some good choreography, and. <sighs> I just hope if if it goes that route though, it's it doesn't turn into some kind of CGI type of deal where if somebody else they superimpose his face on the, the he's guy. Gonna be like Yoda. He's gonna be like Yoda spinning around <laughs> yeah. in uh, you know episode what I mean? it's three. Like, it's, episode sometimes they get carried away with the CGI stuff. It's like I just wanna see real stuff. They do. Yeah. They, is, they went overboard on the first three episodes I, mean, I, I thought with it. Yeah, you know? I, I I can understand, you know, the, the, the space battles, all that stuff. That that's you know, you can't do that in real life so yeah. but like no fight scenes where people are fighting it's like just stay away from the cgi's on that. i think, I think it's think, important yeah it I really think is maybe it's just an easy way for them not to have to train their actors you know what oh, i mean totally. because it, you know how much work goes into those like yeah but I mean, but if you think about like you know when like episode one the dark mall fight scene yeah, that guy was a, a legit martial right. artist. And, He's yeah. a legit martial and, artist. And they yeah, were, yeah, and yeah. they trained hard, and you know, so it looks so much better than right. watching just random like animated thing flying around, yeah, or jumping around like Yoda. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. The, I, I remember when I first saw that scene, like Yoda fighting Count Dooku. Um, I thought it was so cool because I'm like, dude, oh my god, Yoda's fighting finally! Like this is. This is what it looks like to see Yoda fight. You know, he's like this little green guy, like jumping up in the air, like doing oh, these yeah. like crazy well, aerial combos. And, and, then, awesome. and then when he's not doing anything, he has a cane. Right, <laughs> right. And then he goes walk. back. Oh, yeah. dude. He goes a, back to the booty Dharma cane. He's like, he's ah. he, he can't walk when he can do all these flips and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> totally, man. And But yeah, the, you know, watching it again, I'm like, oh, man, they like CGI the shit out of it, you know? And well, that, that whole battle, like from like all the, that whole all the troopers was, coming in, yeah. it was like, it was like CGI. I don't know. I think part of it is like maybe it's like too much of a great technology. Like they were like we could like if you niche it and you use it for certain things, like Tony was saying for like space battles yeah. and stuff like that. But even for like Jar Jar Binks, right? Like, dude, go back to like the old school. Like when you're gonna make the aliens, just make people with like real costumes. Yeah. It would just be prosthetics and because he was he yeah. was annoying as it was, at least in my opinion. But then you throw in the CGI and how like. It added to his level of annoyingness. I was just oh, like, dude. 
I'm just bummed that he didn't turn out to be that theory where he was the Grandmaster Sith Lord. Oh my god! Because that would dude. at least made it legit you, for me. I would, I would just feel better about the you world. You just triggered me right now. I'm like, oh my god! I just thought about the theory of uh, George R. Binks being the Sith Lord. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's just that evil. Yeah, exactly. dude, yeah that was probably one of the one of the most interesting YouTube videos I've seen in a long time. When they pieced it together, I was like, wait a minute. Oh my god, that video is right. so great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I forget the I forget the actual creator's name. Um, we'll have to go back and get the name of it. Absolutely, um, absolutely. I can I can probably look it up right now. But uh, it was such a great video because it it's such a crazy fucking idea. And just to hear George Lucas like have these drawings of him talking about it, being like, "Jar Jar is the key." It's like really, Jar Jar fucking Binks. <laughs> like, no, totally. Oh my! <laughs> like, but Misa, like really, dude, how crazy would that have been at the end of it? You know, at Revenge of the Sith, if it was like you find out. You know, Emperor Palpatine was really the Padawan. <laughs> you know what I mean? He was like in the rule of two, and everybody else was like, you know, oh my God. a pawn. Can, and I, I just wonder how many how many fans would have actually been upset from that. I think there was a lot of fans that would have been they, pissed. They would have oh, lost a lot of dude. fans because I mean that. Yes, but the that thing is, movie they, was just overall just not very good. There's a yeah. lot of there's a lot of people that were very upset with the first, second, and third ones, right? They were very the, upset. The third with it. one. I can stomach. The first two were kind of just... For, I'm going to be... I'm just going to put it out there. The first one was, I think, like... Unless I have to see it. Like, you know how you, like, just recently <laughs> took someone through watching the whole thing? Yeah. Unless I had yeah. to see it, that's uh, never going back on my media system well, again. Well, well, you know, <laughs> and, and that's funny because, I mean, I, I had I had all the videos on DVD or Blu-ray. Or right, whatever. right, right. Yeah. And for some reason, that one came up missing. Yeah. And I have chosen not to replace it. <laughs> And you're and, and, you and I'm okay with that. Like, absolutely, well, absolutely. If it's meant to be, it's meant to be. But I, I only, I only want <laughs> it's the like a last secret conspiracy. They're just going and stealing everyone's. Like we can yeah. just deny it they're actually like, this existed. Movie never happened. Oh god, dude, it's like the fucking uh, the Avatar: The Last Airbender, the real life version, oh, the dude. one that M Night Shyamalan Ding Dong made. <laughs> fucking guy, dude. Anyway. Dude. That's that's gonna be another conversation. Absolutely, probably. absolutely. I can I can have a whole two hour conversation why I hate that shit, dude. God, I love the animated series. I think that's one of the best series out. Oh, it, Airbender was freaking awesome. Yeah, animated. Yeah, animated. Yes, awesome. You know. <laughs> yeah. Let's get one thing straight. He met the animated version, not the movie. That never happened. <laughs> Let that be shown on the record. Absolutely. <laughs> I did not like the live version. Yes. So while we're on the subject, though, um, of Star Wars and talking about movies and stuff, I want to talk about what's going on in Hollywood too now. Okay. Um, okay. Dude, it it just seems like after this whole Harvey Weinstein thing, is you don't have to tiptoe, man. Just just take it. Just grip it. You can make noises with it. You could. <laughs> it, we're talking. We're talking about the Diet Coke can here. <laughs> Since keep, we're not on video, I keep yeah, forgetting we're not on video, so. <laughs> I'm talking about Tony picking up his Diet Coke and like gripping being a ninja it. about it. Yeah. <laughs> that could have oh, went Hold a lot it like of directions. You mean it, son. Hold it like you mean it. <laughs> That's been a Dane Cook joke where he's like, all this could be yours one day, son. When he's like pointing at his junk. <laughs> There's a 50% chance you will grow this. Oh, <laughs> my God. I'm start yeah. spraying stuff out of my nose. <laughs> hey, just don't hit the mic, man. All of our budget went to the mic, all right? <laughs> <laughs> hit the TV for God's sake! It's a freaking RCA, okay? You can hit the RCA, but just don't hit the mic. All that uh, that two months of uh, not working when it's the mic, <laughs> dude. This yeah. is like the physical embodiment of fun employment, right here. Do you yeah. know what I mean? This is literally the physical embodiment of not having to work and still barely scraping by without getting a paycheck for two months. Nice. I don't even know how it happened. Still, I got I finally got paid like a week ago. Oh awesome. really? Yeah, because I had to go another, another like a month. Oh, were you on like a weird like their pay cycle? Like you started like right in between one or something like that? Yeah, yeah, I started like right in between ah. one, and uh, well, it wasn't like actually right between. I actually started at a good date, but I still was ten hours short because of the way their pay cycle works. I was working Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Right. And the cutoff is like Wednesday, so I got you know nine days instead of ten. <laughs> And uh, when you're working four tens, like missing one day. Oh no, absolutely. Dude, it's, it's like it's, uh, 
It's twenty five percent of your work week, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, it's literally like twenty five percent. But uh, no, no. But going back, yeah. going back to Hollywood, what, what did you want to start discussing? So, Hollywood, actually, to me, it seems like it's it's just erupting right now with this Harvey Weinstein stuff, and. You know, since we've been talking about Star Wars and movies and stuff, I think it's a good time to get into it because, um, you know, there's just so much going on and there's a lot that goes into this conversation, I think, because it has to do a lot with power and money in this world. So you got this guy, Harvey Weinstein, right, that Mm -hmm. has been this huge figure in the movie industry for a long time now, for 30 years. Right. He's been doing his thing for a while. And, uh, you know, it's, it's crazy because this stuff is just now coming out about this guy, about these like accusations that he was raping people, that he was pretty much offering these actresses a role if they had sex with him. And it's, it's sickening, man, because you know, this isn't the only guy doing this kind of stuff. Absolutely. In positions of power, yeah. You know? Unfortunately, yeah, definitely, there's more guys out there. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, and as a you know, just just think about it. Like if you're if you're a female and you're attractive, and you're trying to get into the business, you have people that are going to be down for it, and do what this guy says. And if you try to come out with anything, he's going to ruin your life. He's going to ruin your career. So any any chance that you had for uh, a starring role is now gone and for the rest of your life right and unfortunately this is affecting females this isn't affecting males in Hollywood and this is you know a, a problem everywhere else too but mainly in Hollywood though if you're a female and you didn't put out for this guy he was gonna ruin you man it, it, it's it's really weird man because it's it, it's kind of it's these weird like these weird dynamics these weird power dynamics like you were saying and it's it's kind of interesting that the entire industry has been i don't know if it's complicit but at least okay with not talking about it yeah it's for just a turning long, a, turning long a blind eye is what it is <laughs> yep that's exactly what they've been doing for for the last 30 years and the tough part is a lot of these people in this industry speak out about women's rights and how they want to elevate women, but it's kind of weird to see the, or it's not weird, it's just it, it, the hypocrisy and the irony that Absolutely. a lot of these people are either, once again, complicit, turning a blind eye or participating yep. in it. Yep. You know, and it, maybe it kind of goes along, you know, another, you know, the lead into the whole thing about, you know, just the whole celebrity culture. I mean, I yeah. think that so many people take what celebrities or people in Hollywood say as gospel truth that hopefully it helps people to kind of say like, you know what, these people have flaws mm-hmm. and you they're know, not gods. We, yeah. They're people. Yeah, and, and they may be good at what they do, which is provide entertainment for the rest of us. But I think that we shouldn't in that in any way because of that, give them a pass for horrible behavior. Absolutely. You know, but um, just thinking about what you said earlier, though, you know, it's, although it's it's brought to light about the, the women in Hollywood, but I'm pretty sure there's some guys that are affected, something similar to this, too. Or child actors. I'm yeah. sure there's, there's, there's children that are also preyed upon, mm-hmm. you know? Wasn't there a, that's a good thing you mentioned that, because wasn't there a, uh, uh, wasn't there like a pedophile ring going there, on in Hollywood? Yeah, or something there, like that? Was, there, there, there was. There was talk about there was, yeah. what was that? It was a director for, I don't know if it was for, it was for some action superhero franchise where it was, he was accused of child think molestation. It was the guy exactly. who, uh, Zack Snyder? Was it Zack Snyder? I don't know his name, so I don't want to quote a, a wrong person's name, but I will tell you, I think you're right, it's from the X-Men series. Yeah. And he was accused, I think, by, I don't know if it was multiple people for yeah. sexual misconduct with, with kids. And I don't know if it goes once again to that the whole Hollywood culture, that whole industry, mm-hmm. I mean, it is, this is kind of like when it came out to light with like something like the Catholic Church, right? Like there is an institution that people have held to kind of put on a pedestal. Yeah. Not a non-religious one, but they put on a pedestal. But now all this stuff comes out, it's going to be interesting to see how much the public wants to dig. 
Yeah. Because it's going to be really easy for people to be like, okay, he was a one-off creep, and I'm going to move on. Yeah, but I, I guarantee you he's yeah, not. I don't think he's the only one. And I don't even think... I think there are other people outside of producers that are doing this, too. Absolutely. Actors. I mean... I, no, well, because those actors... You know, a lot of the actors that have been in the they biz for a while... They have a lot of say. They do. About who works with them. Dude, um... You know, there there's already been actors that have been, you know, people have been uh, other females mm -hmm. that have been bashing some of the actors, like male actors, not coming out, and they knew it was happening. Well, you know? there, absolutely. There was this one I was reading an article this morning about. You remember that TV show uh, ER? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There were there was a, a lady that was on it where she had said that actually multiple of the male actors and crews were were definitely like heavy gropers and like sexually right. aggressive, and it's like. You're going to you're going to get that because unfortunately there's lots of industries where they're hostile to women. I, I think we got to be honest with it and those are changing I think for the better part in America. Right. But I think that once again it comes down to the hypocrisy of a lot of these people get up on stage and you know they campaign for their favorite politician saying this and this about women or minorities or whatever, but they're definitely leading to the subjugation and the downgrading of a group of people. And this and this chance that came out to news was women. And they seem to be okay with it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because I, I think there's definitely an argument that if you know that something was wrong and you didn't say something about it, you're, right. you're guilty in a certain way. There, absolutely. And the reason that a lot of these people didn't come out to say it is because they knew that they would be blacklisted. Shoot, man. What you said about, uh, Tony, what you said about uh, the actors playing a part in it too and having power is true. Because there was there's some actors that had the power to blacklist people below them they would all they all they would have to say is hey by the way i'm not working with that person i'm not working with that person or i don't think they should work in the in the people's ear you know because they've been they've been in the business for a while and they're very powerful they're very well known that. they can, can just walk into any movie yeah, and it, it doesn't even have to be a specific movie because some of these right. guys they work with a certain movie studio so right. any movie in that studio is affected right mm. the, it, it's exactly it's the it's the movie studio um, that that has the control, um, you know, and if the actor is very, you know, I'm presuming that if they if they have the ear of somebody very high up, you know, then no, absolutely. It's, it's over. Well, yeah, and and you get one of those big time actors. I mean, they're always a big draw. They're they're always going to have a say in what goes on in any of the yeah. movies or anything. Yeah, absolutely. Because they draw the crowds. They make the money. <laughs> they're the money yeah. makers. Yep. They're the ones investing the money, mm -hmm. and they want to make money back and more. Yeah, absolutely. It's like, it's like, hmm, do I please this guy that makes me millions of dollars right. just to not hire this person that is a nobody or yeah. an up and comer? Or she's a really good actor. He's a really good actor, but but who draws in more money? It comes back to the money thing. Right. It's always about money. It's always about power. It's it's about greed, man. Do you, Do you guys think that with this coming to light, do you think that? society is going to now that it's on our consciousness do you think there's gonna be pressure for it to change do you think it can change because this is pretty systemic yeah at least from what i've been reading yeah it they're like dude like the last like what like two weeks it's just been like non-stop every day something's been coming out because people are starting to dig right. they're coming out they feel you know now that he's out because he's been ultimately pushed out i think he's at like some you know immediately he was flown out to somewhere to do some kind of sex rehab like, right yeah sex rehab and that was like his way of like you know look at me atoning like it. i'm i'm atoning like i'm i'm living up to you know but it's it's interesting and what you said is is going to be key are we actually going to like see change in hollywood or other posi positions in power i i think you'll see change in the short term mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I think it's gonna start right back up. It's just waiting for everything to die down out of the limelight and new then... cycle changes. Yep. You know, th that's that's the tough part, and that's kind of the sad part is that, you know, these things that we know are wrong. It, it's frustrating to know that something as blatant as this yeah. can come out, and it won't change the fabric of how that industry runs, um, because this would be a prime opportunity. For people to disrupt that industry and say, you know what, we're not going to tolerate it. Absolutely. You know, and I don't know what it says about us if we continue to buy as a society, if we know what's going on and we can continue to support it by going to movies or yeah. buying tickets. I'm not saying that we shouldn't because I'm, I think there, there's probably some 
very nice people in that industry at all levels. Yeah, but it, yeah. yeah, I mean, you can't really take it out on the industry because I mean, you got you got the average Joe working in the industry, right? Doing you know working his you know. Yeah, 10, 12 hour crews. days, yeah. you know, putting in, you know, just put food on his table. So to uh, do that, it kind of takes away from those guys and girls. But, right. but, but then, but the question is though, is if being publicly shamed, doesn't change it. And the only thing that seems to drive it is money. Unless money is used to enact change or the removal of money from the big guy's pockets. I'm not talking about the guys on the line, you know, all the crew, production crew. Yeah. How can you change it? Because if the answer is you can't, then, I don't know, is that something we're all willing to accept? Right? Yeah. It's, yeah. it's a I hard... Mean, it, it's, it's, yeah, it's a hard... It's a hard-ass question, man, because you need to be able to... You need to be able to, you know, wrap your head around, okay, if I'm going to the movies... I'm supporting. I'm supporting this. You know, if, I've seen, if you get I've down to the nitty gritty, dude's movies. I'll yeah, be honest with you. Right. I paid money, and I've, I've seen as that dude's well, movies. I, I guess. I guess the. I mean, I don't know how practical or the best way to do this is. It's like if they start cutting. These guys, out of the picture. And yeah, the industry is going to struggle, but it'll eventually bounce back. Right. But, you know, as, as long as people see that we're doing something, hey, we're not dealing with this guy anymore because we found out that he's doing this, we're right. not dealing with this guy. If you start cutting people, yeah, you're going to have this down time in the industry, but eventually it'll rebound. But, you know, I almost wonder, though, if we won't, if they won't have to go through that much of a downtime. I think that, like, with Netflix creating their own content, mm. with Amazon creating their own Original content, content, with people like us that are producing our own content, right? Yeah. Like, granted, we're not huge movie producers and doing billion dollar movies or million dollar movies, but I think that with that much content being produced and with that much disruption, what if it's like, yes, there's this plant is sick and dying and mm. we could either prune it and prune the, what we think are the bad branches and hope it grows up healthy again or what if we just move to the next plant over and stop watering this one, let it die, and all the good parts can be absorbed by the new plant? Because yeah. because what if that's just what we need is just to, if the corruption is so deep in that system and this the the misogyny and the sexual abuse of whoever, men, yeah. women, children, animals, I don't know. But what if it can't be fixed? And what if it just we need to let it go and move to something different that'll still provide entertainment and content? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, it's, of course, easy to do. But, yeah, you're right. I mean, there are going to be people that are really good and just work really hard and that are good people and with, with families that may be negatively affected. But the only people we can really blame are the people that got them in that situation, which is the guys that are doing the molesting and the pedophiling and the raping yep. or the girls that are doing it or the you know whoever yeah and the only answer to that is have a no tolerance policy which unfortunately just doesn't happen in the way that industry it's is true. with it's a bunch true. of money with a bunch of power you know you you have to it has to be uh it has to be monitored somehow there has to be some policing involved in order to have a no tolerance policy though I don't even. I mean, do you do you guys even know how this whole like Harvey Weinstein thing came out? Like, what mm -hmm. who who came forward? Because there's a bunch of people that have come forward about it over the years, Since, but yeah. they've gotten blacklisted. What? They've been like wiped, you know, to make sure that like he was always protected. He was that powerful. Wasn't it? Correct me if I'm wrong. Wasn't it broken like in a New York Times article, and then there was like an article in the New Yorker that like corroborated? I could be totally off, but I thought it was like the New York Times that broke it. There were like five. I five women heard... that came against them, right? Yeah I, yeah. I could be totally wrong. I don't I don't know enough of the origin right, part of this story. Right. I just almost feel like the fact that it came out and like Tony said, he, you know he ain't the only dude. Right. You know? Absolutely. I think it's I think it's a very you know, he's just he's just a pawn on a huge huge chess chessboard. He's a very big pawn though. I mean he was a very big part of the industry. But um well, and I mean, and we're just looking at a small aspect of the entertainment industry, because you know this is in the music business. This is everywhere. Yeah. Uh, you know, you you can't. I mean, the music industry, 
you know, deep down, everybody knows it happens. Yeah. But nobody's really addressed it. Well, and so, I mean, this could be the domino effect where all the other industries are going to get hit with it, too, which is a good thing. Absolutely. Well, and get this. You know, I, I just remembered uh, there was an interview. You guys know Howard Stern, obviously. Right, right. You nope, know. never heard of him. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> Stern Howard. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, He's I on never, the radio. <laughs> Isn't he like a radio person? Disc jockey or something? Yeah, he like gets down on the microphone. <laughs> I thought he was a soccer player. Oh, yeah, yeah. Howard, Howard Stern from uh, FC Barcelona. He oh. played with Messi. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I was listening to this interview for, you know, about like five minutes. I was never a big Howard Stern fan. I thought he was kind of like, I don't know. Not cool to people. Yeah, he was like really weird with people. But, you know, as I grew older, you know, I understood why he did it. He was... Doing it for the ratings, man. Absolutely. He knew it was it upsetting people. It made him a lot of people. money. It made him a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, he was doing his thing, man. And but um, he had Harvey Weinstein on there, and you know he was asking him some pretty straight up questions. He was like, "Oh, so, recently uh, he had him on there? Like after no, this whole thing broke? No, this was. Oh God, I don't remember the year. I'll have to look it up. But so it's okay. one of those hindsight type of deals. Oh now. yeah, and there's plenty of these things coming out, man. Again, they're reemerging because of everything going on with him but this interview is interesting because howard stern asked him he's like so man like you know you're in the you're in the industry you know you ever do like cocaine and be with like strippers or you know he's like (laughs) trying to like get information out of him it's like you ever you know i love his question dude did you ever do cocaine off a stripper's ass (laughs) i know you gotta you gotta respect the guy he's just like so uh did you ever do some blow did you ever uh ski the snowy slopes you know but um and his his response was, or I think, and part of his question too was, you know, did you ever, you know, abuse your power? Pretty mm-hmm. much is what he was asking. And he's like, you know what, Howard, I'm I'm sorry to say, man, it's un it's uninteresting, but that's not how it works in this industry. You just can't do that. This was coming directly out of his mouth, so you know, if he was lying through his fucking teeth about that moment, how often it's actually happening, and how people want to keep their jobs Mm -hmm. they don't want to speak up against it because they don't want to be blacklisted from the industry and that's so sad man it really is because they need some whistleblower protection they do you know that that would honestly going back to you know how do you solve the problem this is why nobody whistleblows in the industry because it's so easy to lose your freaking job you know dude you you call out these people you call these big heads you're gone you're never you're never gonna work in hollywood again yeah and unfortunately, there's the other, you know, playing devil's advocate too. Is a lot of times you get the the fake whistleblowers that really ruin it for the the real whistleblowers. Everybody that comes out of the woodwork looking for a paycheck. Uh, man. Absolutely. Everyone's trying to collect some cash. You know, be like, oh yeah, I think he uh, You know, he he hit he hit me up once or twice. You know, it, it's it's one of those things where I think that there should be whistleblower protections. This is my opinion, but I also think that. There should be stiff penalties for lying your ass off. You know what I mean? Like, I think that maybe that that's the reason why, because it's, it's almost like a, something that you don't have to worry about. Like, you can come out with a false claim, and yes, you could be hit with a libel suit or for this or that, but if you got no cash anyways and you're doing it for cash... Yeah, they could sue you, but we're, you know, yeah. I don't know. Would would there be anything to take? You know what I mean? And would there be an attorney that'd be willing to do it? You know, McDonald's hot coffee comes to mind when I think of that. <laughs> I think that was like the the very first time where America was like, oh my god, I can sue for anything. If a lady sued McDonald's because the coffee was too hot and she spilled it on herself, well, well, I could get paid. What about the concept that if somebody breaks into my house? They hurt themselves in my house. They can sue me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, burglar's like, dude, I was like dropping into your ceiling and you left one of your kitchen knives on the table and I landed on it. What the fuck? You bro? know, we probably got some lawyers like, no, that doesn't happen in real life. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I re- I, it's I, funny. I, I read, it does. Yeah. I, I read a story about this guy broke into, it was recent. He broke into someone's house. He was shot 15 times. And he survived, and then he's suing the homeowner because they were like, yeah, you broke in and you tried to rob us, but 15 times is a little excessive. It's like, you know what, though? If somebody breaks in your house and you don't know what they're there to do, and you're there just protecting your family, it's, uh, you know, it's a slippery slippery slope to kind of, 
you know, start 15 times and he didn't die. Yeah, but, I mean, you think about it. Uh, if somebody's totally stressed, they're shooting at somebody, they're not used to shooting at anybody. Right. I mean, this guy could be hitting the arm, leg, and whatever. I mean, right. the, the guy shooting might not be that accurate. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. It, it, you know, it's just it just kind of go, it kind of goes to that thing. It's just it's I don't know, the system may be just kind of wacky on its in its whole premise. You know. Right. Well, aren't you're not? I I don't know because I haven't been to like a gun safety class or anything. I don't I don't actually own one. I should. I really need to get one at this point, but. Don't they train you to empty the clip? I'm confused because they, I thought, or is that well, just, the, is that just that's, for police that's, training? That's if you go. That's if you do actually do training. Okay. Um, the what, the, the, the you, premise I'm, is you shoot into the the, the threat, is, the threat eliminated. is eliminated. Right. Okay. Thank you. I couldn't think of the <laughs> word. <laughs> but, but that doesn't necessarily mean it, that you need to empty your magazine. I right. mean, I, right. I mean. And I, I guess I, I've never heard of that where you need to, where you need to. So I don't know. I don't know where that's coming from. But I think that I think that might be like how police officers are trained. Like they're actually they're, trained they're, to. They're, they're, they're right? trained to stop the threat. Right. So the whether, around. whether it's two rounds to however many rounds. Yeah. But um, it's it's one of those things where unfortunately, if you're in that situation, only you can determine. Right. Okay. Yeah. And. And I think Tony brought up a good point too. I mean, it's when your adrenaline is pumping, like fine motor movements are the first to degrade, right? Oh, like, yeah. you, I think we've all been it. Like where you're, you know, if you're sparring or if you're whatever, <laughs> and you get a little nervous. I mean, stuff that you normally could do when you're just training without any threat, right? Become a little difficult, or you become a little clumsier with the footwork. I don't know. You I know? mean, it, it, here's you know, you can just test this theory out on yourself, you know. Go run up and down the stairs like twenty times and try to write something down. I mean, your hands are going to be really shaky. <laughs> you're going to be like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, your writing's going to be yeah. all sloppy. And, you, I mean, yeah. your 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 adrenaline's going. You're you're you're, you're tired. You're, you're tired. Yeah, that's true, man. And that's then you know you, you you put in all the other factors like you know you get woke up in the middle of the night and you you don't even know what's going on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. So we've gone from Harvey Weinstein full circle back to guns. <laughs> <laughs> One thing we didn't want to talk no, about. Was <laughs> I know. Now we're talking about guns. <laughs> um, so okay, I you know, I think um, you know we've we've had some pretty interesting conversations so far about all this stuff going on. Um, I think uh, our our last subject that I want to get in that that I think we should get into is is the fires. In California right now, um, not you know. I know we've been kind of going back and forth. You know, we went to Vegas to Star Wars, but this is all stuff that I think is relevant right now. That has kind of been weighing on our minds. You know, even, you once know, again because it's close to home. Right, it's close to home. I mean, absolutely. We, I think the sun was blocked out for all of us where we all live. You know what I mean? For a little bit, and it was, um, it was again a. a my heart goes out to everyone down here in Southern California and up in Napa because both of them seem like really crazy situations. And once again, I, I don't know about you guys, but personally, I had multiple people that had to be evacuated from their homes down here yeah. in Southern California. I know a few people. Yeah, I know a few people. people too. And it was, you know, it's just one of those things where, you know, it's it was another situation where I consumed the most of my my kind of information from it from kind of the live pictures I saw from like. YouTube and Instagram and things like that and it was for lack of a word or better word terrifying yeah like seeing those those neighborhoods go down seeing people closing down their houses next next to a house that is just like going up in flames and it's it's a tough situation for a lot of people that lost their homes yeah I can't know? even or lost their lives or loved ones like up north you know I can't even imagine man you know how many people actually lost their homes and their you know, and these are materialistic things we're talking about, but when we talk about a home that somebody's lived in for so many years, that is literally their life. Some people work all their lives to to earn this home or half their lives, whatever. It, it takes hard work to earn a home in yeah. California. Well, and, and, and it's sorry to interrupt, no. but I mean, there's a lot of memories in these homes too, right. because... I mean, you know, you you know, people have their families, their kids grow up in the homes, or they right. have, 
fond memories of a passed away loved one in that home. Right. I mean, they lose all that. Right, right. And even even if they are, you know, even if it is stuff, when you when you consider your home a thing, though, it, it's not it's not easily replaceable. It's not replaceable, especially depending on how what the home means to you, mm -hmm. you know. And like you said, that's really important is the memories that are that are made in the home. And, and, the pictures. and the insurance doesn't replace those memories, you know? Like, you can yeah. get that home rebuilt to exact specs, right. but you're not going to see the lines that you drew as your kid was growing up on the wall oh, yeah. or, you know, the the conversations you shared or the, the Thanksgiving dinners or whatever. And it's and it's tough. And it, the, the tough part, too, and I can only speculate on this, is for the people whose houses burn in a neighborhood – and looking one house over and seeing it other than a little bit of soot and blackness completely normal like yeah. it, it 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 brings up all these like difficult things about like us living together in such like close proximity to each other when something devastating like that happens to you and then you know what i mean you see people whose lives aren't as affected other than they had to leave for a couple of hours or a couple of days and come back it's it, i don't know it's just it's such a complex situation and it's it's once again from the stuff that I saw when I was looking on Instagram and looking on YouTube, uh, I saw a lot of heroism from just regular people and mm. from first responders. Um, yeah. And it was, once again, I, I found it like inspirational a little bit. Once again, I hate to use the word, I just don't know a better word for it, that people going through such kind of difficulty and they, for lack of a better word, maintain a, a good amount of calm i didn't see any hysteria or anything like that yeah. you know and it was yeah you know it's just it, it, it's just it's just tough to figure out you know kind of where they're going to go from here yeah that and i, I want to ask you um when you have home when you have home insurance is it usually always cover covered in fire or do you is it is this something that you have to buy no. So for, I can only speak from my personal experience, but the home insurance policy that we have, fire is covered, okay. right? Um, typically the only things that don't get covered is if you, at least from what I can tell, and I could be wrong, and I'm sure an insurance agent out there will correct us, but I think that sometimes, you know, typically when you buy a house, you need to get a flood certification just to make sure you're not on a floodplain. Mm. And if you do, then you may need to get specialized insurance for that. And then earthquake is not covered, insurance. Yeah. you know, so... But typically, fire is, and depending on the policy, I think most people will get their rebuild costs. But you know, the only problem is, is that, and I only know this from kind of you know having to you know recently purchased a home and purchasing home insurance, was that sometimes these big companies they don't write or underwrite the policies themselves or fund mm -hmm. the policies. Yeah. So sometimes by their you know secondary carriers or people they contract with. You just hope that all these all these other companies have the capital to pay off these these insurance liabilities now, you right. know, because I know they're all rated and things like that. But sometimes when you buy a policy, you don't get a chance to do all the due diligence, right. even though we're all supposed to. Right. So I just hope that you know that that these people get their lives at least that physical portion of their lives rebuilt. The part that they can't, you know, if it's a loved one or you know those memories, you know that's. Yeah. That's where I think the the biggest hole is going to be in people's lives, you know. Absolutely. Yeah, I, you know, I just I can't even imagine because this fire affected so many people, and what what is it like six thousand different buildings in general? Yeah, it's something ridiculous. Buildings. Was that just down here in South Southern Cal, or is that the Napa one too, bro? I think it's with the Napa one as I, well. Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't I, know the exact I, numbers. Yeah, I don't know the numbers, but I think the Napa one had more structures involved in it. Well, and they said, like, the vegetation up there, because it was a wine country, it was, like, explosive, explosive vegetation, so it's just ripping through everything. Oh, man. You know? Because of all, like, the, you know, like, the, uh... The, all the vineyards? Yeah, stuff. all the vineyards out there, they're all burning, mm. and they were just making the fire even worse, and plus, like, the, I know for the Orange County ones, it was mainly the Santa Ana winds mm. that, uh... Oh, they fanned those started. flames. Like, yeah. I know. I they were know. saying, like, the embers from those Santa Anas were going, like, half a mile out in front of the fire front, which is crazy. Jeez. Like, they were they were saying those embers were, like, the biggest culprit for, like, structures being burned, you know? Yeah. And, dude, God bless, like, the firefighters that were on this. I, I don't even remember how many firefighters it took or it's taking, 
but it, it was a huge amount of numbers and they were working like three shifts in a row so they were probably working 24 hours just non-stop like trying to trying to put these fires out because they couldn't li- they literally couldn't get Keep up new with- firefighters in because it was like you know it pretty much cut them off oh really yeah they couldn't actually even get inside to where they had to be to start the fires and you know what do you do like you just keep running your current firefighters into the ground because they're the only ones that can actually fight it oh, man. you know it's a tough job man yeah my hat's off to them because that's yeah, like that's yeah. killer i can't even imagine working 24 hours i can barely imagine working 15 you know that's and that's sitting in a nice cozy chair they're yeah. out there in this blazing no. heat, yeah. heat i got I, mean, I got ac i'm sitting in this nice cozy chair they this, have all this weight on them and then they're, they're breeding all that yeah. toxic crap that's coming yeah. off of the all the furniture that we have and stuff like that is hats off to them because that's a it's a tough gig and i don't know they just there's something to be commended about people that run into danger to help the rest of us out, even if they're being paid for it and they chose it, absolutely. I mean, there's, there's something honorable in that, you know. Yeah, not everyone can do it, man. Absolutely, not everyone can do it, you know. And I, I'm so glad that you know. I, I can only hope that they're being taken care of, you know, at the end of the day. I, Financially I, and you know, health wise and health wise for sure, absolutely. So, I think we're I think we're lucky. We're in a state that I think that does that. You know what yeah. I mean? And. I think you, I think you, ha- and I can't speak to it because I don't I don't see how their you know their their retirement is and all that stuff. But I would hope that you know for all the stuff that they could have to deal with in the future from fighting fires and breathing all this toxic gases and stuff. Hopefully they take hopefully us as a society. Absolutely helps them out. You know. I feel you, man. I feel you. Well. Um, I think we're, I think we're, uh, hitting the end here. (laughs) uh, It's it's been, it's been a really good first session though. I'm like, I'm really excited that we get a chance to lay it down and we got to do it today and yeah, I'm excited to put it out there. Absolutely. And, uh, to our viewers again, um, we, we welcome you guys to comment, um, you know, put anything that you're interested in, any subjects you want us to discuss. Um, we're very, we're a very open platform. Um, we just want to discuss everything that we can or if we're completely wrong about something correct us yeah, yeah. let us know we want to hear your opinions we want to hear opinions we are, this this channel and this uh platform is gonna thrive on opinions actually that's the only way it's gonna thrive is opinions and uh open open criticism so um and we're gonna and it would be great to hear if those opinions were kind of along the lines of what we want to do which was you know we don't want you know, hopefully, we may not. You may not agree with us politically, or even just morally on what we're saying. But yes. you know, if we could have just an open, honest, and polite dialogue, yes. you know, some cheery collaboration. <laughs> yes, cheery collaboration. <laughs> A little CC. Exactly. <laughs> but uh, Bjorn, do you mind telling them, telling our audience how they can find us and where they can they can link to us and what they should be doing like smashing that like button <laughs> <laughs> oh man smashing that like button just I, that reminds me of steve-o in h3 in that one episode where he's like you gotta just smash that like button you know because they're talking about <laughs> how, likes how everyone is just like yeah yeah like us like us subscribe to us yeah come on do it um <clears throat> you guys can find us on facebook instagram and youtube um just do a quick search for a transient chaos podcast, we should come right up. Um, like I said, like we said, this is our first, very first episode of this podcast. There's going to be so many more to come. Um, if you guys enjoy what you heard today and uh, just want to contribute, please reach out to us, like us, uh, you know, follow us, whatever, whatever you want to do to keep up with us. Um, we're going to be releasing episodes biweekly, so. I think our next episode will be. I can't do math right now. We'll put it on. <laughs> we'll put it on Facebook. The 29th of October should be our next one. Most likely, it will be our next one. And we're uh, like, like Bjorn said. Please let us know if there's any topics that you're dying to hear. We're gonna, you know, we'd like to hear it earlier versus later, so we could get it on the schedule. And um, 
Absolutely. Thanks for tuning in. Yeah, thanks for uh, thanks for hearing us out today, guys. Um, again, you can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube by searching Transient Chaos Podcast. So, thank you very much. Transient Chaos. Transient Chaos. Transient Chaos. Transient. 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 Transient Chaos.